your portal to local content worldwide. NevisRadio.co.uk. This is day three of the Scottish your portal to day local trial. content so there worldwide. You go, we made it to day Nevis three. It's Radio. Wednesday, the third of May. I'm John Weller with Mr. John Moffat here next to me. Very good morning, John. Good morning, everyone. And it's regarded as uh, they call it on social media Hump Day, isn't uh, it? Because humpy it's day, the yeah. middle of the week. Humpy it's a bit day. of a hump. Can't say it? Humpy Day, really. No, Hump Just Day. Said it three times now. Did actually. Oh, there you go. Yeah. It is good to be with you in the studio. We've got Simon. Very good morning, Simon. Good morning. Are you happier today? Uh, I have no buzz in my ears, so yes. I've got no feedback. I've got no delay, and I've got no buzz. It's, oh. it's just wonderful. It's he's, a buzz, he's on a buzz list, D. A buzz list. A buzz list. And in our outside broadcast uh, technical wagon, supplied by this Lexus, we've got Dan. And he's got no... I think that's him oh, just shouting. Oh, okay. he, he's, oh, he's just he stood on something. I'm Either not sure that, what's happened. He stood on a Lego brick or something with bare feet. <laughs> oh, Ooh. nothing like it, is Nothing there? like it at all. Mind, I'll tell you what the worst thing I've ever stood on. My belt buckle. Oh. And it's one of these ones with this brass hook Nasty. straight up in the heel. Nasty. And do you mm. think I can get it out? No. Nope. Just going to a wedding as well. Not very good. Mm. Of all anyway, the times. enough right. about that. It is great to be with you. We're here right through until 11 o'clock. Right, well, each and every weekday, actually. Yes, we're through to 11, and uh, today, around about half past 10, we're interviewing uh, a guest all the way from, hopefully, the Bahamas, because he's on holiday there. Um, Bernie, Bernie, Bernie Schreiber. <laughs> uh, no, no, I was going to say 1979 <laughs> World Trials champion and winner of the Scottish Six Days Trial in 1982. Name. His name's Bernie Schreiber. <laughs> no, I remembered his name. Um, so, yeah, he's coming on to talk to us today, so that'll be good fun. And tomorrow, Thursday, uh, James Dable's going to come and see us. He's not riding this year, uh, but he's agreed to come in uh, tomorrow morning to have a chat. I'm not sure what time, but he'll come into the office here at... Uh, the part for me. The office now, is it? This is a studio. Well, studio, sorry. Mm. And uh, we've also got John Hume. He's going to pop in for a chat a bit later on, he said as well. That's so, right. Which will be very good indeed. Um, I think what we're going to do is go for a quick tune. Then we're going to come back, and I think the uh, clock of the course, Mr. David Dignan, wants to have a word about some changes which are happening today. Yeah, that's right. He wants to have a quick word, and he's very welcome because it keeps everybody informed on the Scottish Six Days Trial 2023. That is a plan. So over to you, Simon. Push that button. Let's have some status quo. The Scottish Six-Day Trial on Nevis Radio is sponsored by Michelin and Trial Magazine. Cause you woke up in the morning with initiative to move, so I make it harder. Think about it, so we can move, 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 The world time has come to... Visit a Scottish region full of wonder. From stunning mountainous landscapes to deserted sandy beaches relaxing woodland trails to heart-racing adventure. From historic treasures to the simplest of pleasures, the view from the top, the cleanest air, hidden places and wide open spaces, unearth the breathtaking world right here in the harbour.
You will never be stuck for things to do and places to see throughout Lochaber. Experience the abundance of history, immerse yourself in a movie scene, walk within our great outdoors and see our wildlife running free. Rain or shine, there is always something to do. Get out and enjoy all the incredible things we have to offer right here in Lochaber. Uh, ladies from Nice and, uh, ladies. and Los Angeles, <laughs> and they keep sort of putting a comment on, oh, I can't contact you. Would you like to send me a friend request? Delete. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's how I deal with it. Um, I've got 4,000 women friends through that. What are you on about? All right. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I don't. I just keep deleting them because um, they look a bit dodgy to me. You say that, right? They could have had like a really old bull taco and needing a little bit of help yeah. on their manifold or something. Yeah. Well, why don't they say that instead of saying they want to be my friend? Well, they just want to sort of get friendly first. Oh, yeah, right. Make sure okay. you're genuine. I mean, you could just be oh, one yeah. of these... Uh, yeah. Men behind a mask. People behind a mask that, yeah, that masquerades as a bull tackle fan, but there we go. <laughs> I've got nothing to hide. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Davey's over the phone, he's over the uh, side there on the phone at my nose. Sort of yeah, stuff David out. Dignan's Very in the uh, part firm this morning. Clark, of course, the 2023 Scottish Six Days trial. Um, yeah, a lot happening yesterday. It was a good day for riding, very good day weather-wise. Um, the route's all been changed to the normal Tuesday, but um, as is traditional with the Scottish Six Days trial, if anybody was to ask me anything about the trial, I'd say, watch out for the Tuesday. It has a sting in the tail, i.e. it's normally pretty tight on time. And um, certainly yesterday, um, there were a few riders uh, trying to make up time. That was evident. Um, the only thing I would say is one criticism, most constructive criticism, was that the fuel stop was just immediately after Trotter's burn, which is fine. But then they had the time control further up the road. And, you know, the riders were definitely moving on a bit yesterday between the fuel stop and the time control. Had that been reversed, time control just after the section, and then the fuel, there would have been an easier run down the road because that little road up to Muirshirlich is a very, very busy road now. Lots of houses up there that used, never used to be up there. There have been a lot of new builds. So it's something maybe for the future just to look at, maybe reverse where you have the refueling uh, point as opposed to the actual um, time control, which if that had been reversed, it would have made a, a lot of sense, really. But it's just one of these things that, after the fact, it's great with hindsight that possibly that would be the way to do it. Oh, what was that? A bit yeah, it, was, it was not me paying attention. Um, a bit of a question on that, actually, John. Um, I'm, I'm fairly sure I know the answer, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, obviously, you mentioned uh, the bikes were going up your surely. Um, what, what possibility would there be, do you think, of them using like the canal path? Because obviously people use that as a walkway. Is that, is that kind of thing doable? Because that would be off of the main road or, um, or not? I don't know. That would really be down to negotiations between the SSDT committee and the local council of whoever actually owns the pass. Because it's not Scottish Waterways control the canals uh, round and about Loch Harbour. Is that not the case? I have no idea. I think it maybe is. Well, I mean, there's certain Sc oh, the canal is obviously operated by Scottish Waterways, I think it's called now. And then obviously the tow paths are for, you know, for barges moving up and down the canal and yachts and things like that that go all the way up the Great Glen to Inverness. Um, so th there could be a possibility, but the fact is, of course, if you've got walkers on the path, it's a bit like the West Highland Way, they try to keep up off that as much as possible. Um, so, yeah, it would really depend on what the negotiations were like uh, for um, that sort of access. But they were using the main road, uh, but obviously I could gauge whenever I, I put my... I actually didn't park in the park. I used a, a friend's um, driveway to park yesterday. I've got permission whenever I go up there to use a piece of ground. And um, I walked up there and I thought, oh, they're obviously tight for time with the, with the speed that the bikes come down. I'm not saying they were speeding, but they were going swiftly. Um, but there's a lot of traffic there. But the good old Police Scotland were in attendance. There was two motorcycle uh, police patrolling the area. And uh, certainly when they appeared, everything seemed to slow down uh, because obviously the, the blue light and the, the, the day glow uh, yellow uh, certainly puts people's uh, real fuel off the gas and on the brakes <laughs> hard, you it's know. It's instant, is that fuel yeah. off the gas? Yeah, exactly. And uh, actually round by Strintian, they've actually got a dummy a dummy policeman standing at the side of the road with a, 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 as if he's pointing a speed camera at you. I'll yes. tell you something, I've never seen so many yeah. people <laughs> slow down as quick in all my life as that. I thought, that's, that's a great thing, that. Yeah. That's a very good deterrent and it uh, doesn't cost anything because you just put this big cardboard cutout or whatever it is, a wooden cutout of a copper. Well, you know it's there, but even so you come around that corner and you think, oh, wow. okay, <laughs> even when you know it's there. It's very effective, very effective. <laughs> Uh, We've yeah. got a competition, thanks to our friends at Apico. We do, uh, and today, today we've Even got something different. We've actually got uh, a piece of kit here. It's a uh, Hebo... What we were talking about yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah, it's a uh, Hebo brand... Where are we? Yeah, uh, Hebo brand auxiliary fuel cell, uh, which is normally fitted to the front of the bike uh, across the forks. Uh, it's actually manufactured in such a way it can actually fit on there. Two pipes, one goes into the breather of the tank, and then there's the other pipe, which is a breather. And uh, that allows you to hold, um, I'm trying to think what the literage is, it must be a good 
couple of, well, let me see now, see if it tells you here. No, it just says Deposito Auxiliary Gasolina. Gasolina. Uh, made in Spain, obviously. I think it's a, a, a litre and a half maybe in there. Um, yeah, a lot of tea in it. Um, so that's yeah. it. Uh, high impact plastic, uh, but then again, the, the, the actual petrol tanks are made of the same material, and that's available today from Apico Factory Racing. And um, the question for the Hebel fuel tank is how many sections are ridden each day at the Scottish Six Days Trial? So that's how many sections are ridden each day at the Scottish Six Days Trial? No, so I didn't know it was a fixed amount each day, I thought it varied. No, it's a fixed amount, and then uh, that's multiplied by six, and then you get an answer. But I'm not going to tell you that, because that would give the game away. So it's all boxed up. We took it out of the box just to show people what it looked like. We, 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 we. Well, I did. I said I'm not prepared to do that. Uh, and I did. It was only a little bit of sellotape. Uh, the other thing I would say I is, if you are uh, taking part in the competition and you live abroad, um, if you've got a friend here, if you do win, could you make sure that they pick it up? Because we're not keen to start sending footrests to Australia and Canada and all that sort of thing. That just adds to the cost. Um, what's the, oh, yeah, there you go. There you go. Nice. <laughs> Off the back of that, if you do want to have a look at some terms and conditions, I believe they're on your Pico website. Are they? All right. There you go. Yes. Oh, there you go, then. But no, so we had a competition. Did, have we had a response from the person who won the footrest yesterday? Kelly, was it? Uh, yeah, we just need to yeah. bring up the studio. They'll pick them up in the studio because they're, they're not about in the mornings, but we'll get them sorted out. Okay, okay that, sounds good. That's that's that sounds good. That sounds good. All right, no worries. I'll just leave it out of its box just now because it's a dry day and nothing's got to happen to it. And then we'll repackage it once we've finished the competition today. Very good. Is David coming over, do you think? He's on his way. He's sort of there. Um, on his way. I think he probably can be if I signal to him. He's I'm sort of waving, waving at, in his general ooh, direction. Ooh, darling. He's engaged ooh. in a conversation at the moment, I think, with a couple of marshals. Yeah. Um, not a hive of activity, because it's very early in the morning. It's 7.30 is the first fight, right that's away, right. isn't it? That's uh, right, but everybody's getting set, it, set up just now. We're starting at 97, would I be right in assuming? It'll be, yeah, 97. Yesterday it was I'm 49 learning. started, that was Graham Tails. 97 is the first man away. Not quite sure who it is yet, because I haven't looked up my chart. It's in there somewhere, Luke. What we do is we'll come back to all that, shall we? We can do it. I'm just going to release you're the just... clip there so I can get access to my roots and stuff. Oh. Um, You've got it all locked away, haven't you? Well, when a breeze gets up, it's amazing. It's like your wallet, that. He's trying to get into that. It's like a, a mouse trap. Oh, no, that, uh, my wallet's much secu much more <laughs> secure than that. Yeah. 90, what did you say? It was 96? 97. 97 is uh, Joel Sadler from... Um, the Ripon Motor Club on uh, Beta, of course, because he is with Acklam's Beta, a uh, supplying dealer of Beta motorcycles. So Joel is uh, the first man away this morning, not number one, but 97. So there we have it. Yep, sorry, he looked over just now, they looked away. We'll get uh, David very, very shortly. I think we should have a tune. I think we should have a tune. Go on in, John. Um, what was it going to be? Oh, yeah, a nice uh, upbeat number this morning. Um, I've had a wee think about this, and this will go through your head all day. I hope you've got it on the system, because he is uh, a well-known artist, and uh, his name is Chris Rea. Do you have any Chris Rea? Yeah, we've Chris got Rhea. Driving Home have, for Christmas. Uh, would you have... Yeah, well, it's not that one. <laughs> it's Let's Dance. Hmm. Yeah, it's on there. I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm just scrolling down. I'm, I'm watching somebody with a nice drone plane at the moment. We've, we've, drone we've got a lot of Chris on the system. Um, or is it R E A? R E A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's, well, let's dance. Yeah, let's, let's dance. dance. Do, 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 do. Nice upbeat number. That everybody will be tapping their feet. The, the challenge is don't tap your feet to this record. Right. Okay. 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 Yeah. That's the John Walker challenge of the day. Right. Don't tap your feet. Not wear out. It means less tire changing, less putting air in your tires, less putting tire sealant in your tires. And it's just easier for me as a professional. It just does what I want it to do. It's not doing anything funny. And they've been durable. I've, I've ridden them on some really rough terrain and I haven't had any punctures yet. But to last long as well, it's, it's ideal, really. Mountains, glens and waterways are some of the best in Scotland, if not the world. Breathtaking views 
and awe-inspiring landscape, adventures for us all. Come and explore our water and mountains. It will make you feel alive. From lodges by the river, barges on the canal, or even a luxury castle, they all share the common theme of being surrounded by stunning views and incredible scenery here in the harbour. Rest assured, we are doing everything we can to keep you safe during your stay. We can't wait to welcome you.
911. This is day three of the Scottish six day trial. It is day three indeed. We have got somebody coming into the fold of the uh, Nevis Radio outside broadcast uh, studio. It is David Dignan. And uh, David, are, you, are, you, are we coming this way? There you go, come on then. Yes. Good morning, David. Good morning to you. It is day three. How are you feeling? Yeah, it's grand. Yeah, yeah, I know. A bit tired this morning. Yeah. <laughs> Late night last night, but yeah, I know, everything's good, weather's good. Uh, look, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, when you organise these things, you can only, you know, do 80% of it. We, we have to deal with 20% that, that happens on, on, on route, so yeah, that, that, that's how it goes. No major catastrophes or accidents, things like that. It's all going fairly smoothly? No, no. Good. Yesterday was, was a new day, so of course there's going to Long be... Long day, people are saying. <clears throat> Yeah, long day. I mean, it was an endurance day. Yeah, they say that. Um, from a time point of view, it was shorter uh, than Monday. A lot more off road, obviously. Yeah. Um, and I think, generally speaking, the two thirds, if not more, of the trial come in with time to spare. Yeah. Um, I think it, it tentatively to sort out some of the the, the, the less fit, you know, type of thing. It maybe highlighted some of the. The bike problems. Yep. I think that's a reliability that that's not been proven, you know, in the last few years. So, yeah, yeah you know, you, you can't you, control that. You're even right into the script, can you? No, I can't control any of no. that. <laughs> you know, so that 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 is down to the the, the rider and the bike. Yeah. You know, from that. So, no, it's really good. And today, um, things good, staying the same. A few changes. Yeah, no. Look, uh, today we're, 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 we've got the, the, my planned change of, of, of route, as we'll call it. Tuesday was slightly unplanned, but today, yeah, what we've done is we've, because we're using the, the same part of the afternoon as we did yesterday, yeah. um, we assessed it last night. Obviously, Lee, our deputy uh, uh, clerk, of course, went, followed the, the, the trial at the back, assessed you know, the route, and we've taken the decision today to, to slightly extend the time because we would like, uh, we feel that part of the moor will be slightly wetter. Um, I spoke to the landowner this morning, yep, and we would agree, you know, on that sort of approach to it. And, uh, and, and there's a section where we would like to slow them down. So I don't want them racing, I don't want them, you know, trying to sort of make up time again. So we've, we've taken a decision this morning or, or last night to extend the time slightly so that, you know, we can control that loop. Yeah. Slightly better. Does that help protect the land as well as the ride and the machine? Does it? Is it it's all uh, you know, combined into that? One hundred percent. You know, when, when we're on forestry roads and when we're on newly laid forestry roads, yeah. as we we'll call them, you know, we we would run the risk of damaging them. So the slower that we can do that, you know, the easier it is on that. And and, and it is, and you know, up in uh, Glen Maley, we've got, got permission, and there is the, the the woodland trust up there, which is again kindly given us. You know, permission on there so we, we have to be respectful and we've assessed and we, we, you know we thought right okay we, we need to act on on, on that because you want to go back you want to use it, we you want to do that, that yeah. again yeah you want to yeah. use it again yes exactly that's the whole point and i was chatting to john i think it was on monday and saying you yeah, the amount of people you must have to write to and get that in, you know confirm that you can do this and they've given you permission and i'm assuming that some place would have lat uh, terms and conditions where you can go what you can do who can go there yeah of course it's, we, it's, it's like any organization yeah. you know that we have a different approach for, for certain different landowners, you know. So, we, as I say, this morning we, we've got slightly there. We, we also have to uh, slight change in the, the uh, route halfway round for the lunch stop, which is there. So, um, again, I just asked the riders to follow the flags again. Um, and the, the slight deviation in the course um, just before lunchtime, but no, nothing to worry about for anybody other than the riders to follow. Yeah. And what are the good places to sort of go and spectate today? So this morning, um, we're into Cowart, obviously, which is, is, you know, out in the hill, but we've got a spectator uh, area in the morning, so we've got the schoolhouse falls, we've got Graymere's Tail, um, and then uh, the pipeline. Okay. So, again... Very we've popular kind of, pipeline. Yeah, exactly. So we, we've got three of Graymere's, we've got the big step at the bottom, yeah. um, we've got the two, for those who would want a wee uh, walk up through Graymere's Tail path, up onto the top, we've got very old traditional schoolhouse falls sections yeah. um, on there. So, yeah, there's a good mix in Kinloch even to, to you know, for, yeah. for, 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 you know, for the morning 
yeah, some of the iconic places to go yeah, and see. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You see the photos, there's always the pirate line, there's, you know, there's always the, there's the one yesterday, uh, the last one in the last section was Trail, oh, my mind's gone. Trottersburn. Trottersburn, that's the yes, one. Yes, exactly, the machine Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I, I, and I actually was really good. I, I mean, I popped in there just laterally just to see there we were using one of the new steel pins or a pin on there for. So what's that yeah. about? Because I saw the thing post about that. <laughs> what's that about? <laughs> I mean, as we move on and, and, and we're using uh, Burns where we're trying to build up a little pyramid to, to you know to be the marker on it, yeah. it's so much easier to put a steel pin, drill yeah. it, and, and do that. We've been using steel pins for many years, but as the as the Scottish Six says as an institution, yeah. <laughs> um, we are we're very much off. Uh, yeah. And how's the electronic scoring go? Because it's the first time it's been used on this particular trial, isn't it? I think at this point I would just like big. Massive big thanks to Fergus, uh, Fergus Gray, who's just put that together. Yeah. Um, he's taken the, 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 the basis of what the, the ACU use, um, and he's developed it for you know the Scottish Six Days. So that has gone really well. Um, Fergus is uh, a very meticulous uh, uh, person and, and likes everything, not to yeah. the grey, to the black or white, yeah. we'll call it. Um, and that has gone really well, very well received. Um, observers, yeah, uh, you know, to come out on Monday with no real, yeah, you know, problems. I Until think. Until you is, test it actually out in the field, you don't know how it's going to work and operate. And well, we tested it prior yeah. to the event two or three times in local trials. Yeah. So yeah, look, I think overall, if you were to ask us how it went, I would have said it's gone absolutely, you know, you know, perfect. It must break the boys and girls who are at the end of the day doing the scoring and trying to get results out. That for much easier as well. Well, I think the room's not such a, an activity <laughs> <laughs> um, to, to 11 o'clock at night and, and, and Fergus and, and the team in there uh, is, um, would I say it's slightly relaxed? But yeah. I better not say that. They'll, they'll give me a hard a time. Long, long nights, I know, for the yeah, yeah. people. <clears throat> exactly. So, yeah, no, no, I, I, think, I think a great plus is, has, yeah. has been had for that, you know. Very good. Okay. Well, so I hope they a great day today and the rest of the week. It's not too bad weather-wise. Perfect, I would have said. No, 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 but I, again, just the message of today, you know, the boys have got that slightly extra bit of time yeah. to, because we uh, on there, again, bit of, you know, again, the, the respect on the, the uh, support vans, yeah. that's been really good. A few odd ones here and there, but that's the message of the day, please. Yeah, but on the whole, pretty good. Yep, excellent. Okay. David, always a pleasure. Thank you very Thanks much. You here at Nevis. Cheers. Bye -bye. There he goes, David Dignan. He's in charge of which is happening right throughout this week in the way of the competition and where people can go. He's off. There you go. He's just off to take a telephone call because his phone was ringing in the secretary's <laughs> office and she came round and she went, oh, oh, he's on the radio, I'll have to go away again. Oh, and I've just ob obtained a I was going to say, nice what's set. happening? I saw teas and coffee. Well, there wasn't teas everywhere. and coffees, no, there was coffee and I said that you didn't drink coffee, you only drank black tea, That's so it's right. been given to Dan, the man in the, in the van. Yeah, I see Dan's got one. He's got one and that was courtesy of uh, Suzanne Midgley, who now lives in... I think it's France, or is it Belgium? I'm not, not quite sure. But uh, she works uh, along this weekend with the main sponsor of the Scottish Six Days Trial Jitsi. Um, so she kindly came round with a couple of cups of coffee. Well, so we can play a quick tune and um, get some messages out of the way. I know John Hume's hovering in the background. We'll come back to him and have a chat. So yeah, he's keen to get off to Lower Memoir. So. All right, well, I've got a short tune, short ad. Should we do that? And yep, come yeah, straight back. And John, yep. John Hume and John Moffat will be taking the lead. All the Johns on the screen all at the same Three time. Johns, how about that? Yeah, there we go. Right, John Hume. Uh, is a fit try first. <laughs>
lodges by the river, barges on the canal, or even a luxury castle. They all share the common theme of being surrounded by stunning views and incredible scenery here in the harbour. Rest assured, we are doing everything we can to keep you safe during your stay. We can't wait to welcome you. unusual is it there we are and we have uh, ladies and gentlemen with us this morning on day three which is the third of may uh, mr john hume uh, one of our sponsors here because uh, he's uh, controlling uh, trial magazine uk and classic trial magazine so welcome to nevis radio this morning john let's have a little bit of rundown of how you've been out and about and what you've seen and what you've been doing since the start of the trial on monday flat out literally every day it's been really good obviously the weather's been kind yeah um, good to be back up in scotland um and it's just good to see that the place fort williams vibrant with motorcycle trials um obviously the trial it brings a lot into fort william and they're very accommodating we've been in quite a few of the local restaurants and everybody's really enthusiastic about the 2023 scottish six days trial it's great so yeah. all good yeah it uh, brings in such a lot of uh, commerce to the area in early may and uh, it's it's traditionally done that for many many years uh, certainly back to the war years when the the, the whole trial was uh, figured here in fort william and of course 1977 was the year that they started and finished here so the whole center the nucleus has been in fort william since that time it's quite funny actually because i was reminded last night i thought my first year in scotland was 1976 but it was 77 when the trial moved from edinburgh to fort william for its base right um but what's good to see i mean the west end car park now has become quite iconic associated with the scottish six days trial mm -hmm. and it's like i came up here on thursday to obviously cover the pre-65 uh, scottish film classic trial magazine mm -hmm. and i always laugh when i see the car park empty and then by sunday night it's a hive of activity all the main manufacturers are here and it just it gives the whole town the whole area buzz which is good for trials i think kenlock leaven has actually adopted the pre-65 trial as its own there's two yeah, separate it's like, events yeah, it's it? like the home it's separated itself which you know it's a good thing and from my point of view it's the same old story in kinlock leave and they embrace it very much as fort william do yeah and like you say it's two separate trials but it's like with the pre-65 people don't understand the logistics in the background of putting it on it's like when you look around all this here mm -hmm. and either, everybody thinks it just happens you know and at the back of it all you've got a, a dedicated enthusiastic team who put it all together you know and all i would say to anybody who criticizes any part of the pre-65 scottish or the scottish six days trial just pause for thought yeah. press the pause button and loop around while you why you appear and where you're going Mm -hmm. It's very true because um, obviously nowadays in modern world we've got social media and it's very very easy to jump on there with something like be in your bonnet and you know start spouting yeah. off about it and you've really got to give consideration to the fact that um, it's fine to have an opinion I don't mind people having opinions they might not agree with all of them but I might agree with some of them but the fact is the bottom line is it's down to the organizers of the event and the competitors but more or less it's what the organizers have to go through to get this trial on the ground they've got to negotiate with all the landowners all the various agencies uh, government agencies now uh, police forces and uh, take all that into account so there's a, there's a whole lot of things to do i mean yesterday I, I made an observation that i thought was 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 fair and constructive and that was you know at the end of the day yesterday the um the cutoff point which is a time control was 
down the road a bit from the section Trotter's Burn, yeah. and the refueling point was right at the section, you know, legitimately. If they'd actually swapped that round, it would actually have taken the, the, yeah, the bias off a little yeah, bit. Yeah. But with hindsight, it's great. So maybe next year, if they looked at that and said, yeah, you know what, uh, we could maybe improve that. But we, you, you play with what you've got on the ground, and you're using the available resources available to okay. you to, to make a lot, a lot of people don't realise up here, you're on a lot of private ground. Yes, and it's are. actually a privilege to, to be allowed by the landowners to go on there. Yeah, I, agree. I know this area still has a problem with illegal practicing. Mm -hmm. And all I would say to anybody, whilst you're out doing your illegal practicing, please do not jeopardize the greatest trial in the world because one small action by maybe one small person or a group of people mm -hmm. could, could, you know, jeopardize no, could stop the future it completely. of the child. Yeah. I mean, all these landowners, farmers and crofters and... And, and, and big estate owners, um, they they are quite happy for the trial to traverse the ground once a year. I always laugh when you're burning about, when you when you're reporting like I do on out and about on a bike. Mm -hmm. If you just put your hand up and wave at most of the landowners, mm -hmm. they'll wave back. They're happy right. to have you there. And if, yeah. you, if you stop talking to them, most of them have got trials bikes. That's, That's right. Good. That's right. It's very true. Um, and and uh, but the thing is, they, they're not too keen on people just uh, winging it and turning no, up and, and no, unloading not. their van and having a practice. The, the way to do it certainly is with bits of land. You, you go to the farmhouse or the or the croft or whatever, and you say, look, would it be possible if I came up maybe once a month or once every two months just to try my bike out with a couple of friends? We'll let you know what's happening. And I've always found that, uh, you know, if yeah, the landowner gives you job. that... Yeah, you a lot of this ground up is private, oh, yeah. and they just need to keep away. There are many facilities throughout the UK. There you are. Know, you've got the Bob McGregor Trials Academy, you've got Interperfect Trials, mm -hmm. Hookwood Trials Centre. So if you want to go out on your trials line, you know, do it sensible. And there's usually every weekend in Scotland an event. And the way I yeah, used to do it was I didn't practice, I just rode every weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that in itself is it's practice. practice yeah. Bike time, and I was a younger man. But I just used to enter trials. I, I, yeah. I would spend, you know, the whole year riding. And it was only when I got married and started having children and stuff like that, I really pulled away from the actual I think, riding I think side. if you have a look, the calendar's quite full and you can, I mean... Mm -hmm. I find it quite interesting. There's like a boom period in trials in sort of March and April where lads are getting ready for the Scotty Six Days trial. Mm -hmm. Same for the Scott trial. Mm -hmm. well, um, I mean, up here, I mean, the funny thing is, uh, the Inverness and District Motorcycle Club use one piece of ground every year that actually the Scottish Six Days use. Good, but we yeah. have permission from the landowner, yeah, yeah. legitimately positioned. And it's certainly not an area of land where it has a triple SI on it that you need double permission for, one from the landowner and one from Nature yeah. Scott to actually go out on the bike. So be very, very careful. It's very, very important to have full permission before you ride your bike off-road because went, there is law against I it. I went yesterday to Leonacken. Which oh, yeah. is usually the opening group on Monday. Is, I went yeah. there yesterday, obviously Tuesday, mm -hmm. and I was really pleased the club had, had really put some fantastic sections in. Mm -hmm. I went and watched the one under the bridge, which you know gathers spectators, mm -hmm. and then I walk up to section two, and it wasn't a world round section, but technically it was very very difficult to clean. Yeah, and as happens in Scotland, the section changes during the day. Mm, it does one of the early cleans was. Uh, 13 times winner Dougie Lampkin, which I must say, always calm and controlled. But he picked his own line, rode it very calm and collected. But later on in the day, at the back, there was Billy Green and Jack Pace, and they chose a totally different line to Dougie. They rode it as a, a younger, fresher set of eyes. Yeah. Dougie went for definitely going to clean this. And the others were a little bit more spectacular, rock hopping and doing, with the end result to clean. Yeah. But what else was really good to watch is the amount of good expert centre riders who also clean the section and when the organising team, the section plotters, put these markers in, that keen eye to find a section, mm -hmm. that, you know, 90% of the entry can have a good go at, yeah. but cleans are still few and far far between. Yeah. So yeah, it was good and I think spectator turnout's been good early on in the week, whether they'll all stop up here or not I don't know. Mm -hmm. The weather's looking good, which is always in Scotland good, Yeah. so you know, we can probably have a good week. Who yeah, do you think it? will win? Me? Yeah. Well, my my thoughts on it is never, ever rule out Dougie Lampkin. No, for definitely starters, not. But um, 
I think, um, you know, looking at the results at the moment, I mean, you, you've got two or three people that could come into the four. It's, it's, it's still low score, isn't it, John? Yeah, it's still, yeah. still, this is the, the, the middle of the week now, uh, today, so it'll be interesting after today. i probably have a better prediction then, but the, the thing about the Scottish Six Days always has been, it's a six-day trial. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and anything can happen between now and Saturday afternoon, late afternoon. And it has happened in the past, and I was speaking to Alex Wigg, uh, before the trial started and I, and I was just recapping that he'd won it in uh, 2011 I think it was and the next year he came back as the current holder of the Scottish Six Days Trial Trophy if you like and his chain snapped That's on Tom Albrecht, Tom Albrecht Remember it, yeah. which completely ruled him out of the trial yeah. and uh, you know he was he certainly on finish for on the podium he, he yeah. kicked him off the podium That's right and, and that can happen on a a Saturday afternoon, so it's... Uh, well, I'm going from here now, I'm going down to Lower Mamor, mm -hmm. and it's not a part of history, but I've got the picture of... There's the Gordon right. Jackson picture, the single dab, I've got the single picture of Dougie Lampkin having his dab. Yeah, because it basically happened on the same piece of mountain, because Lower Mamor is at the bottom yeah, of yeah, the yeah, grave. Yeah, same image. area, yeah, yeah I agree with you. Yeah, and uh, it, was, it was quite fitting, that, because uh, Gordon Jackson himself conceded the point, well... Dougie equaled him. He didn't actually beat him no. because they both finished on a, a one one mark score, uh, which had not happened since 1961. I, I didn't realise I'd taken the picture until Dougie done the section. Of course, modern cameras, and Dougie went up the set. I didn't think he was going to dab, and he did do, and he rode up to the top of the section. Mm -hmm. Bear in mind that he'd done every. This was on the last day. That's right. He rode to the top of the section at two minutes two. Ten, 10 seconds of reflection, bag on and gone, pause for thought. No sort of emotion, nothing, no. just a job. He had right. a dab and make sure you don't have any more. And I thought, you know, Dougie, you've done yourself proud there. Mm. You know, you've gone up, all the pressure, and had that dab and rode off and just thought, I've had a dab. That's it. Um, job done. I, I think this year, Dougie can still win, we all know that. But when you've got the young talent of Jack Peace on the Sherco, mm -hmm. Billy Green on the yeah. Scorper. Um, Quite a few people have been tipping Billy Green for the top. It'll it's, be interesting, but also I think this it's year... It's holding it together for six yeah. days, isn't it? This year's really good as well with the one two five lads. Yeah. Harry Hemingway, Jamie Galloway, mm -hmm. Jack Dance, yeah. Alfie Lampkin. Very entertaining to watch. Very entertaining. And somebody asked me the other day, who's ha what has been the highest finish of a one two five, And I couldn't tell them because... It goes back some years now to the Peter Gaunt is era. There a chap, is there a chap Arthur Fisher on a Francis Barnett or something? Way before my time. It might be in your time, John, late 50s. I don't think it would have been a 125. Some of the capacity classes in the olden days were Roy like... Roy Peplot, what did he win on? Well, he was on a 199 Trial Cover in 1959, so that was, a, that was the first small bike win. But, of course, the 125s tended to come in on the late 60s, if you remember. Yeah, you had the Dalesmans, the Sprites, yeah. and, yeah, they had all the... the Suzuki's. Yeah, basically, when Villiers pulled out, the foreign Are you prompting a in. question here so that I can go back tonight and find out for you for tomorrow? No, well, it might be a good idea. Yeah, yeah. I'll, There's I'll, bound to be an answer out there somewhere. Somebody, somebody will come and tell you today, John. There is. I believe it. Oh, do you remember... Right, something? John, I'm going to have to shoot off well, now. Well, have a good day. Lower Memora, is it? That's Just before I go, I'd like to thank Nevis Radio again for providing this excellent facility okay. and, and bringing the trial to the listeners public, uh, Mitchley probably mm -hmm. supporting us and at the end of the day um, you two guys and everybody at Nevis Radio brings it all together, huge yeah. thank you good. Well, thank you very much for your support and no as well as other uh, sponsors but uh, you have a good day at Lower no, Mamora I think my wife's actually popping out there as oh, well she might have some sandwiches isn't it? she might do, she might do. She is this. That's, if, that's if my little grandson hasn't <laughs> smacked them all up of course, so he's going out for bye, a bye bye Steve, you were my sandwiches I'll <laughs> take them off him <laughs> Try you'll, have have a job. you'll have a job thanks, anyway, thanks very much John, John. Thank, thank you very much thank you there you go. The two Johns, we've got three Johns in the studio right now, it's a bit bizarre. Um, and it gets very confusing sometimes, but that's the way it works. I wish I had a normal name like Cy. Well, you know, you've got my cover, but... <laughs> got to do something. So there you go, then, as I say, he's... Uh, John Hughes, one of our main sponsors, Trial Magazine. And he owns the publishing company, doesn't he? Yeah, CJ Publishing, uh, down in uh, Buxton, Derbyshire, um, they put together the two magazines. And uh, it all started, I think, in France. Trial Magazine started in France, and John took on the franchise. 
and then obviously it's grown into the, the business it is today where uh, you know it's covering uh, trials all over the world the trial magazine brand tends to cover you know the Scottish six days the sort of modern trials and world championships etc European championships so John flies all over the world uh, doing his job and classic uh, trial magazine that uh, majors on the history of the trial it reports on trials from a way way back and uh, also covers things such as the recent uh, pre-65 Scottish down in Kinloch Leaven uh, as well as other um, major classic type trials that we now have in the sport. I mean, for example, up in Inverness, where I'm associated with the Inverness district, we have the Highland Classic trial coming up in June. 200 riders wow. uh, on Alvey Estate. And without the landowners, Jamie, uh, Laird Jamie Williamson of Alvey Estates Limited and Dalradi Estates, we, we wouldn't be able to run that event. And uh, it, it's really it's a really good event, very, very well supported. It's always, in the last sort of 10 years, been very much oversubscribed. Which is good. And that, you know, the sport is obviously thriving, there's new people coming through. Looking around here, this there's a lot of new, young, fresh faces, I reckon. Yeah, yeah, there's, a, there's a, a whole heap of newcomers in the Scottish this year. Not that that's anything new in itself, because obviously as lads come up to 17, if they're UK resident, they can enter the Scottish six days. And um, you always need, in a modern trial like this, uh, new blood coming in. Uh, because um, some of the older riders would decide, well, I've done, you know, 10, 12, 14 Scottish six days, uh, we'll have to get, call it a halt. But then you've got riders likes of um, Nigel Burkett. This is his 50th Scottish six days, which is really amazing. His first trial, I actually watched him in his first trial, it was 1971. He was riding a 118 Crooks Suzuki, and he actually worked as an apprentice motorcycle mechanic with Eddie Crooks. In uh, brought in, in uh, um, what's the place for uh, I've forgotten the name of it, but down in the Cumbria area. Yeah. And he worked with Eddie Crooks, had a special 118 Suzuki, and um, he's a couple of years older, I think he's three years older than me. Uh, but my, my friend, my good friend John Hodge, and I were brought up by my father to the Scottish that year uh, because uh, we were following around uh, an Austrian rider, Walter Luft, who rode many times here as well. Uh, but we were taken by this young guy because he was uh, around about our age group and um, we watched him in all the sections and we just felt that he was going to be really good and uh, he was of course, uh, he rode for many of the factories, he rode for Fantec, he rode for Yamaha, Suzuki, uh, Montezza and he also had a go on, on, on Orsa as well so um, of course through time he decided to branch out and start his own business primarily servicing uh, ATVs and quads okay, and trikes yeah. for farmers uh, but of course, being from the trials uh, community, he you know wanted trials bikes in as well, and uh, built up a, a business, uh, Burkett Motorsport, and of course now he's the importer of the Scorpa brand uh, from uh, France, and uh, is uh, doing his 50th Scottish. He's, he's and he's still as enthusiastic now as when he was as a 17-year-old when he first came up here. That's good. No, it's good to see that keeping that continuation, and as you say, the new blood coming through. That's very, very important to keep it going. Yeah, it's just the generations yeah. that follow on, and, and there's, there's a lot of uh, family connection as we, we've talked about earlier this week. You know, uh, guys going round with their sons. I mean, like so, the early numbers, yeah. Jimmy Mc, and McDougal yeah. and Fraser McDougal, but there's lots of other ones as well uh, that are taking part where their, their fathers are accompanying them. Um, but it's a, it's a hefty task, a task because the older you get, the harder it gets, you know, to, to keep fit and bike fit, etc. But a lot of them do it, which is good to see. What we do is we go up to the news with a junior we can, but we'll just do a refresher on this competition, John. For the, uh, yeah, we have a, a Hebo fuel tank, which I will hold up. Which camera I'm on? I'm not quite sure. Is it that one? Oh, I don't get any of them. That one. That one. Um, so that's a Hebo auxiliary fuel tank uh, given to us by a Pico Factory Racing. Uh, one of the uh, supporters and sponsors of the um, the breakfast show this week, and basically the question is quite simple: How many sections are ridden each day at the Scottish Six Days Trial? So that's how many sections per day are covered by the Scottish Six Days Trial. And if you get that right, uh, if there's more of you, we will get somebody to draw a number. 
uh, that's against your name and see if you can win this. So uh, hopefully we'll get a winner pretty soon this morning, I would hope. We had 33 entries last uh, yesterday, last day, the last we day. We did. That was just for the foot rest and the day before we had a set of aluminium handlebars. So these, uh, I think the handlebars have been picked up and I think somebody's picking up the foot rest today from the studio. So you can either pick up the winnings, which is the Apico um, Auxiliary Tank today, either here at the Park Ferm, at the studio here in Park Ferm, or you can uh, make arrangements to collect it from Nevis Radio uh, up in the industrial state, Ben Nevis Industrial State, um, at some point by arrangement. Absolutely. OK, Sai, si, how are you? Yeah, we're, we're, we're getting out. I can't need to go because my times are done, really. Yep. But we're back after 8 o'clock news. players. You will never be stuck for things to do and places to see throughout Le Havre. Experience the abundance of history, emerge yourself in a movie scene, walk within our great outdoors and see our wildlife running free. Rain or shine, there is always something to do. Get out and enjoy all the incredible things we have to offer right here in Le Havre. Lodges by the river, barges on the canal, or 
even a luxury castle. They all share the common theme of being surrounded. Day three in Nimbus Radio down at Park Ferme, the uh, West End car park for locals. But uh, for this week, it becomes Park Ferme, the uh, centre of the trial, which is happening right through until Saturday, which will be the very last day. Um, in the studio, we've got Simon Ray. Good morning to you, Simon. Sorry, I'm dropping my pen. Uh, yeah, morning. Happier today, I guess. Uh, just, just plenty going on, as always. Yeah. Uh, actually, obviously, you mentioned the competition there before uh, the news. Uh, just to sort of clarify, um, ideally, you need to be able to pick it up from Park Fermi, but you can enter today by uh, WhatsApping or phoning the studio, 01397 706 100. Email the studio at studio at nevisradio.co.uk or just get us on Facebook at Nevis Radio Official. So you can also give us some detail on uh, YouTube on a live chat box. But obviously, if you pre answer there, you're kind of going to give it away. So I'd rather you didn't. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. And it's quite a nice prize. I'm trying to think what else you could use it for if you're not into you know, motorbikes. But I guess even as a youngster, it'd be just nice if this comes off a bike. This is what they put on their trials bike. And yeah, that's the sort of stuff I used to collect. Well, see, I was looking at thinking stands. you could put it on like a, a chain around your neck and then drink tea out of it. You drink your juice through it. Yeah, you could. So it's got a breather, so you, you, you wouldn't get clogged up. Nope. But we're not saying that's what it's designed for and that we endorse that. But uh, not, not probably the greatest thing. When you get it, it's up to you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But no, it's, it's, it's here and it's say thanks to Pico for uh, sponsoring this part of the uh, day and for running an in-commercial with us as well, which makes a big difference. Indeed, and I guess if you are sort of looking for bike parts, uh, check out their website. Uh, alternately, if you are in the area, stick yourself down Park Fermi and I'm pretty sure they've got a stall down there as well. Uh, I've got Brian Palmer. Can you please tell Uncle Gareth and Brandon 145 and 146 to keep their feet up? Love from Freer, I think that says. There you go. See, I can read, but I get very close. Thank you, Dan. You put that up there. Um, we've got lots of action happening right now. John's wandered off. He's going to get a cup of tea and a coffee for us. Oh, I'll ask that's him for the morning. First break then. of the day. He's been full on. Come on, that's a whole hour of chatting and talking about bikes. He loves it. <laughs> so he's not been down to the hub yet. Where the uh, I, th I thought we were going to have a battle of the wits with the two Johns, starting to talk about history things. Like, oh no, oh, my God. here we go. I just get out of it. I went behind and did some camera stuff. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so, so you can look on uh, what we're showing at the moment. There's a lot of stuff happening. They're starting uh, just behind where we're based here, so we don't really get a full picture of it. Um, but I think we're up to about rider one, three, two. It's just leaving Park Ferme and going up on the ramp as we speak. So uh, that's what's happening there. Uh, coming up this hour, we'll have some local news around about 8.30. David Cedric, thought for the day, quarter to nine? Yes. See, I've always got it in my head. I'm learning. Yes, all, all, all there. I've only done it a couple of years. Uh, we also didn't do the weather last year because John Moffat did it, but we'll do that uh, very shortly as well. Uh, yeah, we can play tunes as well as we want. Yeah, a, a tune from Dan, has he messaged you? Uh, he did, but um, I'm trying to think what it was. I think it was MGMT. Oh. Um, electric field, I'm pretty sure that's what he said. If he didn't, that's what I'm playing anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and you wonder who Dan is. He's the man who's making all the pictures and the sound sort of come through properly from our... Uh, Technical station, I'm going to call Yeah, I think if you are watching our YouTube feed, obviously there's no buzz today, which is lovely. So big thank you to Thistle Access for helping sort that one out for us. Um, however, do have a little bit of static, but I did notice yesterday one of our aerial cables is looking a bit frayed. So I'm going to see if I can maybe sort it out after right. 11 o'clock today. Yeah, no. And one thing after another this year. see how we're operating, because, I mean, this is a big thing for us to get the pictures to sound right across the world. It's not a, a five-minute put together in a man's shed. No, well, I mean, well, I'll tell you what we could do, actually, right? This, this could be a bit of a challenge for everybody. If you leave everything switched on after 11 o'clock, I'll come down there. We'll do a wee video ourselves, yeah. and then maybe we could upload it, and then maybe we could play that out. Yeah, and people can ask questions on that as well if they want to. Yeah. But at the moment, there's there's two of us down here, plus John Moffey. I'm not just plus John Moffey, but he doesn't do the technical side. John just talks. He's the guru. He's got the knowledge and the contacts. Um, so between us all presenting and camera jiggling today, we're no camera operators. We had two the first day, one yesterday. I don't know what I've done to upset them, but... We've definitely got one tomorrow. Well, I think that's just the thing, isn't it? Uh, obviously, being uh, the radio station that we are, uh, it is voluntary-led. Yeah. So people do have other things to do in life and uh, work, especially at this time of day. Yeah, no, Because exactly. people have got jobs to go to. Uh, they can't just sit around having fun. No, like we do. Yeah, exactly. You get paid to sit around having fun. Come on. <laughs> I tell you what, it's, it's stressful. <laughs> uh, it's stressful. But, I think we all age over this week. Um, I say... The work that goes into this week is, is way beyond what we usually do, and I say we really, really do put it out there to, to make it work. So and all the boxes between the storerooms, they obviously come out and play, and uh, yeah, it, it, it's really cool. Actually, I love it. It's fun. It's, it's fun when it works, but it's yeah. stressful when it doesn't. <laughs> stress. What stress? Right. So we we'll play this tune for Dan. Get some messages out of the way. Come back. We will do the weather. Yep. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> Thank you. 
From lodges by the river, barges on the canal, or even a luxury castle, they all share the common theme of being surrounded by stunning views and incredible scenery here in Le Haber. Rest assured, we are doing everything we can to keep you safe during your stay. We can't wait to welcome you. players. You will never be stuck for things to do and places to see throughout the Haber. Experience the abundance of history, emerge yourself in a movie scene, walk within our great outdoors and see our wildlife running free. Rain or shine, there is always something to do. Get out and enjoy all the incredible things we have to offer right here in the Haber. for much of the morning but patchy light rain developing south by early afternoon this will extend to the rest of the area by late afternoon light southeasterly winds with a maximum high today of 15 degrees centigrade 59 fahrenheit tonight cloudy with light rain or drizzle initially turning dry by in the south by mid-evening later in the evening further north it's going to be not too bad as well uh, dawn brightness will be de developing in the south who wrote this minimum overnight low five degrees centigrade 41 fahrenheit that was today's weather on Nevis Radio, brought to you by Thistle this Access. Is day three of the Scottish Six Day Trial. We are indeed uh, on that hump day, they called it, day three. Uh, Mr. Moffat went off uh, all of us about 10 minutes ago. It took him eight minutes to get just around the corner from where we are chatting to people. You, you knew that was going to be the case. I thought, oh, he's on his way back. No, he hadn't even got down there. Mm. Yeah, but that's the way it happens. Just ended. Uh, obviously, you've covered a message off on uh, YouTube. So if, you, if you are watching, uh, good morning to you there. You can leave us a wee message at the side there. We can have a wee chat, put that out. Uh, you can get us on the WhatsApp, 01397 706 100, or you can get us on Facebook Messenger as well. I uh, just messaged uh, Nevis Radio Official there. Uh, we do have Instagram, by the way. Uh, I've kind of totally discounted Instagram this week, along with Twitter. I've got too many things to be looking at, but no, you can follow us on all these things, usually under Nevis Radio Official. Yeah, so lots of ways to get in contact with us, and please do. It's always good to hear what you're thinking, who you want to get in contact with. And, of course, we've got this competition to take part in. If you want to do that for this, uh, it's an Apico tank. It's got a name on it. Uh, oh, is it here? Uh, Bebo? Maybe Hebo. Bebo. Hebo. Hebo. 
Matthew. Yep. Um, how many sections are ridden each day in the Scottish six-day trial? Simple as that. How many sections are ridden each day in the Scottish six-day trial? I know we've got some uh, correct answers already, which is good. Thank you for taking part. We do indeed. Uh, number to get in touch with that one, 01397 706 100. Give us a phone or a WhatsApp on that number. I uh, see. All happening. Uh, I say people fettling. I like seeing them, what they're doing on their bikes. Some are just cleaning the air filter out, which is normally under the seat, I believe. And uh, just making sure, I suppose, everything's tight and proper, ready for the day of competition. Indeed, plenty to do. Uh, obviously, we've not had a look at the route yet. I suppose we'll get that when he comes back. Uh, if ever he returns. He'll return. It's a long way for him to go down there and catch up with all his amigos. He's, he's, just, he's just like a, a free spirit wanderer. A <laughs> free spirit. Moffat the free spirit. Indeed. But we are indebted to Auntie. John's taken a week off, whatever he normally does as well, to come and spend the mornings with us. So we sort of take it for granted in a bit, but uh, yeah, he is the man with the knowledge, the uh, yeah, and all the, the it's the contacts and people he just knows. Oh, that's such and such. Yeah, we've been a bit lost though, because I don't know a thing about bikes. <laughs> I don't know if that comes across or not, but uh, yeah, I don't. Well, I've got a fair understanding. So I used to ride for many, many years, but not in this uh, capacity whatsoever. I, I did ride. The, it's an old Yamaha I used to ride, and it was a lovely bike, but it wasn't very comfy on the road. All right. Um, I used to work on a bit of a, a small holding and you could they had big log piles, so you could sort of scramble it over that as far as I ever got involved. All I know is there's no stereo and the seat's not heated. <laughs> and your hands get cold. Yeah, exactly. It's always cold hands I didn't like. I used to have my mittens on, motorcycle mittens they were. I see, yeah. Nice no, I, I'll stick to being in my car, thanks. I, I, I like my home comforts. <laughs> so bringing us the town and pictures, uh, myself, John Weather, John Moffey doing the commentary, Simon back at the studio and Dan in the trailer. And I say a big thanks to all our sponsors. Uh, we, without them, we wouldn't be here. It wouldn't work. Indeed. Uh, and so while we're talking about that kind of stuff, uh, I believe you have some merchandise down there. I don't know if we can get that on the camera. We've got merchandise of many, many sort of capacities, really. We've got a Pico merchandise. We want stickers and key rings. We can do that. Yep. Uh, we've got some, I'm leaning over there. We've got some nice sheets of stickers and there's key rings. We've also got the odd pen, which is really nice. So uh, they've been uh, given to us. And Nevis Radio merchandise. I can't really zoom in because I'm on the table. But, yeah, so we've got nice mugs now. This is all thanks to uh, Gallery in the Fort. Yep, so you can Julian get the stuff Green. in the high street. Uh, well, our stuff, not not the Opico stuff. You get that from the Opico stand, no doubt. Uh, but our our, our, oh, our kit, burst. mugs yeah. that I can see on the screen just now. Uh, you can get that in uh, the high street in the gallery in the fort. Just pop in, go see Gillian and Gwen. They'll kit you out whatever you would like there, um, and all. Things like that, bought with our logos on, uh, a portion of that comes back to us to help us do what we do today, yeah, got, really. I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm, I'm just going in the bags. We've got these tote bags. Hang on, I, mean, I can't might do both things. I'm not a man. Right, so we've got quite... Multi, nice multitasking's a tricky, bags. tricky thing. Sure. There we go. There, right. It's so nicely printed. And inside the bag... Oh, this is worth some lunchbox. Here we, we have keyrings, which are nicely gift-wrapped. Yep. In there. And these are really nice quality. Coasters. We've never had coasters before. No, we haven't. It's something that we have been asked for in the past. But they are really, they're like a melamine thing, I'd have said. They're yeah, nice finish on them. They're really, really nice indeed. So, uh, as I say thanks to Gillian and Gwyn down there. Um, they've had faith in us. They've bought a load of this. They're going to give us a, a quite a chunky percentage of all the profits, which goes to our uh, funds to keep this going. Indeed. So, no, big, big thank you to Gillian and Gwen for sorting out. And I say you can go down there and check it out. And amongst that, you also do have uh, a whole range of uh, products from uh, a number of local artists as well. So, yeah. if you want something authentic from the area that's come from some artist in the area, uh, I believe whatever they do down there, it all goes to support them too. Um, and, they, so and they've got a bag which is sort of oh, homage to you, is uh, the <laughs> which is a mental. Yeah, uh, from a tune I did many, many years ago for a bit of fun. Uh, it kind of blew up a bit. bit of fun. You enjoyed doing it, though. Well, it's got to be fun. I it for a long time, actually. Uh, is this, is this, are we going to end up playing it? Is well, that... it might bring back memories. We, it got one of these songs, I mean, I know you did it a bit tongue-in-cheek to start with, and you were mucking around. Yeah. And then it sort of grew legs and wings like midges do. Yeah. And then it started getting annoying like midges are. Yeah. Then it came back and bit you in the backside like midges do. Just like midges do, yeah. And then it went away for the winter like midges do. And it came back again. Let's bring it back in the spring, why not? Yeah, well, to be fair, I was out yesterday after our efforts. I kind of went for a wander just to get away from the technology. And um, they were out. Yep. It was yeah, noticeable. They just started. They yeah. just started to come around, didn't they? Yeah. Um, so, no, I'm sure we can do that. I'm just organising my hour at the moment. Um, right, so you've got local news coming up. Are you ready for that? Yeah, uh, yes. <laughs> yes. I, I have some local news. Well, do you want to do, a, do, you want to do this tune, um, get your message out of the way, do that, and do the news, then come back to us? Would that work for you? Uh, yeah, we can do I'm just having a look. We've got two short advert breaks this, this hour, yep. so we'll fit them in, and yep. we'll go for that. That helps us out when uh, Thought for the Day with David comes on as well, doesn't it? It does indeed. Uh, OK, then. Right, well, I'll tell you what. 
We'll play Sack Noel, um, courtesy of myself and uh, vocalist Sam, who's also local. She might be listening, so good morning, Sam. Um, here's a bit of a throwback for those who uh, know the score. And I say, this is what inspired a range of goods down in the gallery in the fort. Because you woke up in the morning with initiative to move, so I make it harder. Visit a Scottish region full of wonder, from stunning mountainous landscapes to deserted sandy beaches, relaxing woodland trails to heart-racing adventure. From historic treasures to the simplest of pleasures, the view from the top, the cleanest air, hidden places and wide open spaces, unearth a breathtaking world right here in the harbour. You will never be stuck for things to do and places to see throughout the Haber. Experience the abundance of history, immerse yourself in a movie scene, walk within our great outdoors and see our wildlife running free. Rain or shine, there is always something to do. Get out and enjoy all the incredible things we have to offer right here in the Haber. Visit a Scottish region full of wonder, from stunning mountainous landscapes to deserted sandy beaches, relaxing woodland trails to heart-racing adventure. From historic treasures to the simplest of pleasures, the view from the top, the cleanest air, hidden places and wide open spaces, unearth a breathtaking world right here in the harbour.
or sorry, not studied, but knobbly tyres. Uh, but these tyres are not like motocross. They're a lot uh, closer positioned, um, really designed to, to grip on rocks and things like that. And uh, they, they are not as fast as, as they look. Um, what sort of tops are you looking at? 40, oh, You're talking about probably about 55, 60. Okay. Uh, right, yeah. But the thing is, these riders don't tend to ride them uh, fast on the road because it... Uh, uh, they get very warm. Um, they've got a little. Uh, the modern bikes now are all water cooled, and they've got a, sm a very small water jacket round about the piston and cylinder, and um, so you you tend to to see them running on the road around about 35, 40. Really, to be fair, they can motor on a bit, but um, they, these guys are saving the bikes for a whole week of event, so uh, they're not they're not fast. You you you'll be lucky if they they overtake many cars on the road. To be to be fair, the only one I got a message again, I think it was yesterday um, about they won't they're not in single file a lot of the time they'll be riding two abreast or even three abreast. And they thought that was out of order. I said, well, you know, maybe make, they feel safer doing it that way so people aren't but you know cut them up. I don't know, but they said this woman actually said, well, they should be single abreast. Single abreast. I said, yeah, they probably should be by law. They should be by law, but um, I think uh, people get a little bit excited at motorcyclists anyway yeah. because they get uh, if you see them on motorways. Um, a lot of the riders actually cut up the middle of the, or traverse up the middle of the uh, uh, stationary traffic. And there is a, a reason for that, is because there's been quite a few uh, fatalities of motorcyclists where they've actually queued on a motorway and then somebody slammed into them. So, I mean, they don't have crush areas like a car does. So what the motorcyclist tends to do, it's not a case of getting to the front of the queue, it's just his own safety, his or her own safety, by riding up the centre if it's if it's doable, so that, you know, if there is an accident, uh, they're not in the middle of it because they don't have the same protection as a as a four-wheel motor motor uh, on the road or a truck or whatever. That's on the cooling end. They do rely on a lot of air coming through, hitting the fins, and that's yeah, yeah. cool. So they, to keep a motorbike running is better than having it stuck in traffic. Yeah, but obviously now a lot of the motorcycles they built for the road are yeah, actually water-cooled now too Things as well. Really so they've got, they've got radiators like a car. And, and they have a uh, special cooling, don't they, in them now? It works a bit better, I uh, Yeah, it's mo well, it's just... Uh, very similar to the sort of antifreeze you have in the car, uh, but all these things are now very technical. Well, it's some kind of an ethanol, which almost, I don't know, I don't read if I read that wrong. Yeah, yeah, the, the, I, um, glycol, etc. Yeah, um, I mean, the, the whole idea is to keep a constant temperature on a water cooled uh, as opposed to an air cooled. In fact, somebody once described it as not water cooling but water warming. It's, uh, it's to keep right. it at a constant temperature. It's a different way of looking at it, yeah. yeah, it's so many degrees Fahrenheit and uh, or centigrade. They, they keep the the water jacket nice and warm so that it's up to operating temperature. That's why you should never rev a vehicle when it's just started, yeah. uh, because um, all the all the components have to warm up. And then once they're warmed up, actually they reckon that the the, the most amount of wear on a a petrol uh, engine or diesel engine is a start-up rather than minutes, when yeah. it gets up to temperature and everything's running uh, efficiently. I guess for anyone who does drive, the, the most noticeable thing is on a cold morning with a diesel car, it takes five minutes to get going. Yeah, yeah. Aye. I mean, uh, all, all these uh, the engineers design in at the factor in that a vehicle will not be up to operating temperature. That's why when they're set up with automatic enrichment devices, it, that it doesn't allow the vehicle to rev too high. But, uh, you know, you do still get people who jump into the car, start it up, rev it, rev, rev, and... <laughs> yeah. And the best thing to do is just let the car do its business and uh, just keep your foot off the accelerator, because they're all, they're all set for... Uh, reasonably high tickovers nowadays and in fact when you dip the clutch in my van it actually picks up the revs so it's an yeah, anti-stall well, device well, as man, well yeah. so um, you just got to be careful but uh, no the bikes are, are on the road from, from time to time not all the time no. um, yesterday there's quite a bit of well not too much road work to be fair I'm um, not sure what, what road work we do have today there will be a little bit I would imagine um, but they tend to take the bikes off-road as, as much as possible now uh, what's the plan for this? We are going hour? to go and do the local news very, very shortly. Then we'll come back and do the route, can we? And that'll be yeah. what we do thought for the day. we fit that in, do you think, Si? Yeah, that, I think I think that kind of works. Is right. it Mr Sedgwick? He'll be in at so quarter two. Yeah, shortly. I spoke to him yesterday up at Trotter's Burn. Mm. He was looking very well indeed. He is. He's lost a lot of weight, though, hasn't he? He has, a, has indeed, a lot, yeah. A lot, but uh, looking well. Right, then. All right, you wait on me. Well, I can do. We'll give a quick refresh of the competition if you're not quite ready. You uh, no, no, I'm, I'm good to go. I just, I just didn't know if that was my cue to press a button or not. Yeah, go on, push a button, do some talky stuff. Okay, uh, I'm going to do the news. I'm going to do a 
tune in an ad, and then we'll be back, and then we can run straight through. Sounds like a plan. From 96.6. You will never be stuck for things to do and places to see throughout Le Havre. Experience the abundance of history, emerge yourself in a movie scene, walk within our great outdoors and see our wildlife running free. Rain or shine, there is always something to do. Get out and enjoy all the incredible things we have to offer right here in Le Havre. Visit a Scottish region full of wonder, from stunning mountainous landscapes to deserted sandy beaches, relaxing woodland trails to heart racing adventure. From historic treasures to the simplest of pleasures, the view from the top, the cleanest air, hidden places in wide open spaces, unearth a breathtaking world right here in the harbour.
You will never be stuck for things to do and places to see throughout Le Havre. Experience the abundance of history, immerse yourself in a movie scene, walk within our great outdoors and see our wildlife running free. Rain or shine, there is always something to do. Get out and enjoy all the incredible it's things day we three have. of the Scottish Six Day Trial. John Moffat and myself, John Weller, down here each and every day this week, right through until Saturday. Absolutely right. Simon back in the studio each and every day, including Saturday. Yep, that, that's correct. And Dan's going away after today, not coming back. He might be back Saturday. Hopefully back Saturday. Good. <laughs> Keep the team together. Yes. Tell you what, uh, here in those adverts, uh, John, do you like a curry? Yes. What about other John? John yeah, I like curry, yeah. Um, move through Fort William, the West End Hotel is formerly known, now, now the move through Fort William. Uh, they've got a new curry menu on the go. All right. Uh, so feel free to go check out. I think it's Fridays and Saturdays, uh, oh, if right. I remember from the advert. Uh, so that'll be available to you this uh, coming weekend. Do the kebabs and everything else as well. Mmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yum, yum. Yeah. So we're going to have a quick look at the route, if that's OK. Yeah, over to me, to the route there for Wednesday, the 3rd of May 2023, at the Scottish Six Days Trial. Um, in the morning, it's down in the Kinloch Leven area, um, with two sections at Calart, uh, which is not accessible by the uh, public or the sorry the spectators because it's a bit out in the hill. Uh, so Calart's uh, first to go. The first rider should be there now because uh, it's 8:36. The first rider was due to arrive around about eight o'clock. 8.45, coming up very shortly, uh, three uh, subs at, uh, or sections at Lower Mamore. That doesn't have a grid reference, but I'm quite sure it's spectator friendly. But uh, car parking could be at a premium there. Um, that's at the foot of the hill of the old uh, Mamore Lodge Hotel and Mamore Shooting Lodge, as it was originally. Um, so there's three sections there. Um, then they move round to Group C, two sections at Schoolhouse Falls. There's a grid reference there. First rider will be appearing in about half an hour's time. Uh, followed by uh, Group D, which is three sections at Greymare's Tail. Uh, very popular section in its day. I think uh, David Green was planning to go to Greymare's Tail uh, to, to watch uh, today. So if he's listening at Nevis Radio, uh, good morning, David Green, uh, our presenter in the afternoons. Um, first rider there, 9.15, so people will be getting set up there as well. So I think um, the first, sorry, not the first group, but se- sec- the second, third and fourth groups should be available for spectating. Um, then, of course, uh, Group E, very old favourite nowadays, iconic section of the Scottish Six Days Trial, the one you see in all the videos and pictures over the years. Uh, pipeline. It's always been asked, uh, when did they start using pipeline? I used to say it was about 1968, uh, because uh, in 69, uh, Bill Wilkinson won the trial, managed to pip uh, the great Sammy Miller into second place, or sorry, third place, I think he was. Uh, pipeline's on at 9.30 this morning, just in about an hour's time. Um, and there's two sections there with the six pipes going up the hill, followed by Group F, Loch Chirain, it's not really accessible, nor is the Larig or Bradleg. It's a good walk out to Bradleg. You've got to be a fit boy to go out there. Um, but no, it's uh, it's not really recommended for spectators. The spectator heavy section in the afternoon is the single section, Group I, which is Burn, an old favourite. Uh, converted a few years ago by the, the owners, uh, there's a new bridge put in. Um, so it looks a lot different to probably about six or seven years ago. Uh, the whole terrain changed. There's actually a, a proper bridge there now, and uh, it's a bit open. It's like a spectator gallery there. But uh, again, uh, be careful where you park because it is a single track road. No parking in the pa- uh, the uh, passing places on that road, please. Uh, the police will be in operation there, I would imagine, with a uh, 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 motorcycle police. Uh, first riders there, 12.30. Then they're off to Group J, Glen Malley. Uh, first rider there at one o'clock. And then Group K, five sections out at Uch- Uchen? Uchen? Something like that. There is a grid reference there, so that possibly could be another spectator-friendly section or group of sections. First rider there at... Uh, uh, 1340, 20 to 2 in old money. So that's the route for Wednesday, the 3rd of May. 
looking pretty good indeed. A uh, rider one six seven. That's where we're up to. Just leaving the uh, ramp now. Yeah, um, just a bit of a difficulty for us now. We're not actually facing the riders uh, in the, the studio here. Where we, previous years we're actually right beside the riders leaving. Um, so a bit of a change. So I was hoping to try and get some riders on today if we can. Tomorrow we'll be interviewing um, former Scottish Six Days trial and uh, British champion, former British champion, uh, James Dable, who's coming on uh, to the studio to have a word with us. Not sure what time yet, because I haven't checked my, my personal messages, but uh, we will have him tomorrow. And today, uh, around about 10.30, we'll be uh, having a chat with uh, former world trials champion and Scottish Six Days winner, um, American Bernie Schreiber. Very good indeed. A very nice man to chat to. He's so knowledgeable and still passionate about the sport and what it can do for people's lives in a way because he just loves getting youngsters involved and pushing it, doesn't he? He does. Uh, the sport never left him. He did actually take up different employment once he stopped riding professionally as a trials rider. Uh, he worked with Greg Norman. He also worked with Malcolm Smith Racing in America. And, uh, yeah, he's got a very rounded uh, outlook, uh, very clever individual. Um, he's very much a planner. Uh, he doesn't work without a plan. He doesn't wing it. It's no. not his style. He doesn't uh, like doing interviews without knowing what the questions no, are. No, he wants to know. And, and I think that's really good because it keeps you on, 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 the, on the money there. And, uh, yeah, uh, he's always good to deal with and good to, to work with as a Bernie Schreiber. Very knowledgeable chap. And uh, we've got him uh, at 10.30 today on Nervous Radio, all the way from the Bahamas, would you believe? I can't believe well, that. Hopefully, 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 because I, I think we were supposed to test it yesterday, but I, I don't think we did. No, but I've, I've reached out to him. I've dropped him a message um, to see if we can get it sorted out. I think I've got a plan. I just need to make it work. Yeah, there oh. is a time delay, I think. Not a time delay, sorry, a difference in time. Time difference, there'll be quite a yeah. big one, I thought. Yeah. Ever so slightly. It's like about eight hours or something. You're going to get him up at <laughs> two in the morning, <laughs> yeah, poor guy. Right. He's got to, have to get up early. Yeah. We'll be on the side of the beach somewhere, though. No doubt. Got to be, got to be in yep. the shorts. However, another good news, I've been brought up bacon roll. Look at oh, that. Mr. Sedgwick, you ruined that boy. <laughs> Got to look after him. Got to look after him. Uh, a very good morning to you, David. <laughs> good morning, John. Good morning, John. How are you doing today? I'm um, good today. Yeah, no, great. Had a good swim this morning yep. and uh, yeah, enjoyed it. Had a good day yesterday. Had my first visit to Trotter's Burn yesterday and uh, I enjoyed that enormously, actually. And going seeing that last section that they do there, it's a sort of vertical waterfall for about, I don't know, it looks like 10 or 15 feet. It's a hell of a climb, isn't it? Unbelievable, actually. But uh, yeah, there were some amazing riders on it, actually. It's, uh, I think it's getting on the flat stone and then jumping across onto the right rather than actually trying to go up the centre of the gully sort of thing. Just below the big waterfall is what I've worked out anyway. That sounds about right. I mean, I'm glad you managed up to the top sub there because it is uh, quite a spectacular one altogether, isn't it? Dude? Yeah, and a really pop... I mean, I, normally I've been at first sit in places and it's uh, not as popular, you know, because people don't walk up to first sit as much, but this one was uh, bombed out with people. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah, good. Yeah. No, it, really was, good. it was good. It was nice to see you, John, as well, yeah, actually. Nice Catch up, well. get You're the crack. very and... well, yeah. Now, you were talking about swimming there. You were... We were, we were talking to a, a good friend of mine and uh, about a good friend of mine and he's recovering and uh, you did say that uh, to aid recovery, um, get into the swimming pool. Exactly, exactly. It doesn't yeah. make a difference even for me. I know, I'm not, I know I'm overweight, but swimming actually helps on the muscles, the limbs and the joints. It's, it's, yeah, it's non-weight bearing exercise and that's the important thing, John. Is, uh, it really is. It uh, makes a huge difference. I certainly had it when I had my uh, broken ankle a few years ago and... Uh, it was uh, using a moon boot for about uh, third week onwards. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was non-weight bearing for eight weeks, but I was able to just hobble in with the crutches and the moon boot, take the moon boot off, get in the pool, and then come out. And, uh, and it just meant when I came off the, off the actual non-weight bearing, I was able to have a really good range of movements and things. Yeah. But yeah. discuss it with your physio and your doctor. Don't, uh, don't just take it on yourself to do it. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, that's right. A gentle yeah. swim can't do any harm, can it? That's the whole point, really. No. Not at all, not at all, it's, it's, absolutely. It's all good. And we haven't really chatted, have you got any sort of trips over to Rwanda, are that planned? Um, the next one's planned, I was discussing it last night with a colleague who's one of the surgeons in Shetland, and we're going, hopefully going back in October to teach basic surgical skills. So basically what we're doing is we're trying to, incur well, we're helping them to teach, um, teach the course that's taught by the College of Surgeons. Well, all the college, the four colleges of surgeons in the UK have brought together this course for two days to enable young trainee surgeons before they start making all their mistakes and getting into bad habits 
to actually give them the good habits, to show them a good, safe way of handling all the instruments, suturing bowel, suturing skin, suturing tendon, repairing an artery, all those sort of things. We do it in two days uh, with some animal material. We use some pig uh, uh, intestine and, uh, and pig trotters, and uh, it's really a good simulation. Um, but we're also encouraging them to take it on. So when we're going now, we're more mentoring than actually running the course and helping them, giving them tips and things. And you know, what did you do well, and how can you improve on this? And uh, it's uh, um, uh, yeah, it's really valuable, and, and uh, it's great fun doing it as well. well. I thought you've been going there quite a few years now. The people you've taught must be now passing on what they've learned from you on to the next generation. Absolutely. And one of the times, actually, we had some guys up in the West Bank, because I go to the West Bank in, in Gaza, and uh, so I was uh, teaching in 2012, and there's a photograph of me testing one of the uh, trainee surgeons from Gaza um, at, uh, in Jerusalem. And, uh, and then seven years later, um, I go back and I've got a photograph of, uh, of him actually teaching the skills because he'd become a consultant in Gaza um, and he was teaching the skills on the course. So that's really satisfying to see that um, and, uh, and going through that. And I'm assuming you get feedback all the time, people getting in contact with you from over there, saying how they're doing. Can, and do, do they ask for help as well? Well, they do. Um, and no, it's, it's more the... But the difficulty is he's getting into Gaza because you've got to get yeah. a permit to get in and uh, in there. And it's, uh, it's very challenging. And even yesterday on the news, there was bombing in Gaza again. And uh, it's, uh, they have a really tough time. And they're amazing surgeons with what they deal with and um, in the sort of trauma. Um, with limited resources. Um, absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, they really absolutely. Are. It's one of those places you can just never see it having peace, can you? No, yeah, not everybody getting on. I can never see it. No, I mean, it's, uh, the, it's, it's the difficulty is, is trying to get the immovable object meeting the irresistible force, and it's, yeah. uh, and it's somehow, well, they've got to get peace somehow, and I think yeah. we in here, in this country, and uh, in the States, have got to start doing something to do a bit more to build peace, actually. Um, I think between the two communities, somehow or other, um, yeah, no, it, it's, it's, it's just very sad to see, and yep. you know, the general per person, the other, the man living on the street or lady living on the street. I mean, it must be turmoil all the time. Well, it is. That's the thing. That's. I mean, we. The last time I was there in 2019, we got bombed on the last night, yeah. and uh, that was a scary experience. But I came into the hospital to see the team there, and uh, and I said, "Wow, what a night!" And and they said, well, "That's just you know one of those nights that happens." <laughs> and. And they were all out getting their messages in the market and things that morning, you know, and you can imagine this country would be sort of, you know, all the blinds and shutters down and everybody shut the doors and staying inside. But no, they're back out and getting on with life, it's actually. something that um, you, you see on the news reels that in, in a war zone, basically, that's what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, the, the, the elderly lady walking through bombed buildings yeah. with bombs going off were, were shopping bag. I know. You know, that's, know. that's really it's quite scary, on, yeah. isn't it? Oh. I've got to say, David, with all due respect, uh, you do magnificent work. I mean, having retired from being a, a full-time surgeon to actually going to these places and training other surgeons, it's, it's fantastic because my worry always is when somebody stops doing something, whether it be a motor mechanic or, yep. or a bike, uh, the tuner, you think, oh, I hope he's got to pass it on to somebody else. I mean, we had it with uh, a wheel builder yep. uh, with spoke wheels, and uh, the good news was that he actually got a guy in two years before he actually stopped doing it to yep. train him up and mull my wheels go down to Fife to Barry Brown to get him to true them up and, and rebuild wheels even from hmm. time to time. And it's, it's the same with yourself or your profession, teaching others how to perform surgery it's amazing it's yeah really it's great. absolutely it's a real privilege john and i mean obviously the state trained me and i'm happy to be able to hand it on having gone through university in st andrews and edinburgh and uh, i'm delighted to be able to and also i think my wife would have gone mad if i'd been at home all the time and i would too i would honest. too <laughs> poor francis David, hand over to you thought for the day okay good morning simon john and john and all the listeners here in loch Arbor and around the world during this week, I'm encouraging us all to think about what lessons we can learn from trees. On Monday, I talked about having, a, having good roots for stability in our lives when we face tough times. Yesterday, I talked about the changes in Zacchaeus' life after he climbed that sycamore tree in the city of Jericho and after meeting Jesus, what happened in his life. One of the most important factors for the growth of trees is light. If you do an experiment by planting some seeds in two pots, Put one of them on the windowsill and the other in a dark cupboard. Look at the pots every day and by a couple of weeks you'll see the seeds germinating and sprouting at the same time. 
At that point, they look the same. Then a difference is seen. The plant on the windowsill began turning its leaves towards the sun and they were nice and green, while the one in the cupboard was pale and thin and grew in a confused manner. This emphasises the importance of light for the best growth of the tree, for the flowers and the fruit to develop properly. So what can we learn from this? Jesus famously said in John chapter 8, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So this light gives us a way of living our lives that is fulfilling. In another part, he says, life in all its fullness. He enables us to be our true selves. I often talk of us uh, and our lives being like a flower or a tree that is in bud. And it's vital that the warmth and light from the sun shines on that bud to enable it to open up and display its true beauty. In the same way, we need to allow God's love and light to shine on us to enable us to be the people we were intended to be and are often held back by our past or the darker things in our lives. The other positive result of being in the light is that you bear fruit and that can be outwardly in the way that you share your talents and gifts for the good of your community and all that you come into contact with. There's also an inner fruit that comes when we experience the light of God's Spirit, characteristics that would help us in our marriages, our friendships, our neighbourhoods and our workplaces. These are, as written in Galatians, love, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Who wouldn't aspire to have more of these in our lives and those we live and work with? So grow towards the light. Let God's light shine on you, and you never know what might happen to you and those you love and live with. When you try your best, but you don't succeed, when you get what you want, but not what you need, and the tears come streaming down your face, when you lose something you can't replace, when you love someone, but it goes to waste, could it be worse? Lights will guide you home and ignite your bones, and I will try to fix you. Let's listen to Coldplay singing. Thank you for listening. Be back tomorrow. When you try your best but you don't succeed When you get what you want but not Visit what a Scottish you... region full of wonder from stunning mountainous landscapes to deserted sandy beaches, relaxing woodland trails to heart-racing adventure, from historic treasures to the simplest of pleasures, the view from the top, the cleanest air, hidden places and wide open spaces, unearth a breathtaking world right here in the harbour.
You will never be stuck for things to do and places to see throughout Le Havre. Experience the abundance of history, emerge yourself in a movie scene, walk within our great outdoors and see our wildlife running free. Rain or shine, there is always something to do. Get out and enjoy all the incredible things we have to offer right here in Le Havre. Visit a Scottish region full of wonder, from stunning mountainous landscapes to deserted sandy beaches, relaxing woodland trails to heart-racing adventure. From historic treasures to the simplest of pleasures, the view from the top, the cleanest air, hidden places and wide open spaces, unearth the breathtaking world right here in the harbour. It is Wednesday, Wednesday the 3rd of May, uh, wherever you are listening to us in and around the world and here in the UK, a very warm welcome to you. It's great to have you there. Uh, I had a question, David, you don't mind me asking. Go then. Which church do you frequent? What, what religion? It's called, it's, it's, it's called the Mustard Seed. It's a non-denominational um, group of, uh, of, uh, of Christians that meet in Kilmally Community Centre, 11 o'clock. Well, it's meant to be 11, but we're West Highland time, so it's uh, usually about 10 past, a quarter past before we get started, which is a little bit faster than African time, because uh, that's usually at least half an hour later than when it's meant to be. But yeah, that's where we meet. We're, we're not um, a, a sort of major denomination or anything, which is a group of Christians that meet together uh, with some children, and, uh, um, and and adults um, in there. Yeah, notice there's only come up and just say they like the way you put stuff over. Right. Oh, well, so that's nice. <laughs> I didn't get the name. They just all wandered off. <laughs> you get these people sort of shuffling. I think they're a bit embarrassed. They, yeah, they are. We on? Are we live? Are we live? No, 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 no. <laughs> and uh, I said I'll ask the question. Yeah. No, that's right. So it's Kilmarnock Community Centre, 11 o'clock on a Sunday. Uh, anybody's welcome. And uh, a cup of tea afterwards. Nice chat and good supportive group of people actually. Very good indeed. It's two minutes to nine. Can you believe that? Well, see, seeing that two minutes, can I just say a big thank you to the uh, staff at the Belford Hospital for sorting me out with the bacon roll because oh, that was pretty tasty. <laughs> here you go. Yeah. And we got our bacon rolls, didn't we, in the end? We did. Yeah. I went for them. Took a long time. I didn't eat it. I didn't eat one, though. You didn't, though. We've got a no. cup of tea. You left the bag in, though. Very upset yeah, about that. Yeah, sorry about that. That's fine. I'll, I've had it every day like that. <laughs> and, and Dan got his bacon roll, so he's well, well happy today. All sorted. <laughs> and a bit of sauce. Yeah, a lot of sauce. A lot of sauce. I made a bit of mess. Oh yeah. Yeah. So in the next hour, we'll have a look at the results. We've not done that yet. We've got a competition still running. Do you want me to do the competition? Well, you got a minute. Yep. Yeah. Okay. We've got a Hebo auxiliary fuel tank, courtesy of a Pico Factory Racing, and the question for the win of the Hebo fuel tank is: How many sections are ridden each day at the Scottish Six Days Trial? So that's how many sections are ridden each day at the Scottish Six Days Trial for the Hebo Auxiliary Fuel Tank, which uh, John is modelling now. And uh, obviously, if you win it, you'll have to make arrangements to pick it up either from the studio here in the Park Fermi or the studio up at the Ben Nevis Industrial Estate in Fort William or some other arrangement by uh, telephone or whatever. Yeah. Telephone or whatever. That is, uh, well, telephone and WhatsApp is what we're looking for, and that is 01397 706 100 on WhatsApp or the phone. Or you can get us on Facebook, Nevis Radio Official, or email the studio at studio at nevisradio.co.uk. 
There you go. So, so well, fast approach the news. It's great to have you with us, and uh, we're here right through until Saturday. Um, after the news, can we start with some breakfast in America, please? Super Trump. Breakfast in America. Uh, yeah, I think so. And then we'll come back. We'll have a look at the results. Do some weather and. Uh... From ninety-six point six to one hundred two point four. Cause you woke up in the morning with the initiative to move, so I make it harder. From lodges by the river, barges on the canal, or even a luxury castle, they all share the common theme of being surrounded by stunning views and incredible scenery here in Lochaber. Rest assured, we are doing everything we can to keep you safe during your stay. We can't wait to welcome you. is such an important part of your bike it's the only part which touches the ground and when you get that perfect combination it's hard to beat the michelin tires have been perfect for me i've been running the dh22 on the front and the dh34 on the back and it's a really good combination between grip and rolling speed it's hard to find a tire which has both the grip and the durability and not wear out it means less tire change and less putting air in your tyres, less putting tyre sealant in your tyres and it's just easier for me as a professional. It just does what I want it to do. It's not doing anything funny and they've been durable. I've, I've ridden them on some really rough terrain and I haven't had any punctures yet but to last long as well it's, it's ideal really. Our mountains, glens and waterways are some of the best in Scotland, if not the world. Breathtaking views and awe-inspiring landscape, adventures for us all. Come and explore our water and mountains, it will make you feel alive.
they did, did get round. Didn't he? Did yeah, they got they the, got round, the and uh, Gill's a very very good rider, yeah. and uh, well, so is Matthew. He's a good yeah. good, good competitor, uh, but unfortunately, uh, it doesn't seem to have been repeated this year, to my knowledge. Having said that, I haven't gone through the complete entry to check it, but I didn't notice any when I looked at it initially. Um, but uh, yeah, it all seems to be back to petrol this year. Yeah, that, that side of the commercial side of the trial world seems to have cut back. Like even here, we haven't got the big trade stands now because it costs so much money to run and man them and get them over here. I guess. Yeah, that's right. Um, it's it's, it's, a, it's a juggling act. You've got to bring all the equipment in, and so you've got transportation costs from dealers' shops. You've got to effectively then restock that shop when you go back. So. For them, it's a bit of a hassle, but for, for here, it's uh, yeah. a little bit quiet in the yeah. uh, paddock area this year. Although you do have the support vehicles in and, and people come in at night to watch them, you know, changing back wheels and, and doing the maintenance on the bike. You know, there's compressed air set up for them to blow some of the, the, the muck off the bikes and then the, the, the mechanics and all these places sweep up after and put it in the bin. and. You know, it's just a bit of excitement, but uh, unfortunately, there's not. It's 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 a sort of gone backwards. I remember the the, the first time that the the late Jimmy Morton from Sorn and Ayrshire asked the committee, "Can I take my van into the car park?" And he started selling uh, bits and pieces from his van. He yeah. was a Boltaco agent, actually, was Jimmy Morton, and also Montesa through Jim Sandiford's. And uh, he was the, uh, effectively the first trader uh, or bike dealer to come into the, the Park Fermi area, paddock area, with his van, J.D. Morton, and a well-known character in motorcycle sport up in Scotland. He was a road racer, a motocross rider, and a trial rider. And he started it off, and then everybody else followed suit. And literally, you couldn't park in this place for dealers uh, trading. Yeah. And uh, they actually used to discount a lot of this stuff. And it was a case of get down to the Scottish six days and get some uh, get some discount off some parts and, and clobber and stuff like that but sadly that seems to have disappeared now the world is a changing I have a question John yeah um, you mentioned about electric bikes and petrol bikes has a diesel bike ever been done not in the Scottish, to my knowledge, but there have been people who have uh, made diesel engine bikes for the road. Um, I know of a, a Royal Enfield had a, a diesel, I think it was actually a model in the range as well. But some private people have put petter diesels into motorcycles quite successfully. But, um, you know, diesel engine works a bit different and it's a, a dirtier engine, or it was back then, and it didn't really take off. But the, the mileage you could get with it was phenomenal. Yeah. That's the difference. Yeah. Okie dokes. If you want to get in contact with us, there's many, many, many ways you can get in contact with us, either through the uh, phone lines or the uh, messengers or the uh, Facebooks and the apps and everything else in there, Simon. You see, I'm very good at this stuff. Yeah. Oh, is that, is that my cue to go through yeah. it all? Okay. Uh, yeah, you can message the studio uh, on WhatsApp or you can phone the studio on the exact same number, 01397 706 100. You can email the studio at studio at nevisradio.co.uk. You can get us on Messenger on Facebook under Nevis Radio Official, uh, or you can tweet us as well. We do have Instagram. You can follow us there at Nevis Radio Official, but to be honest, I've kind of left that alone for this week. Uh, and indeed, we've also got YouTube, and we've got a live chat box there, so you can stick a wee hello in there if you wish, uh, which again is youtube.com forward slash Nevis Radio Official, where you can follow all of the live footage uh, on your screen. We really do enjoy your comments and feedback on what we're doing here at Nevis Radio, um, covering the trials. Uh, we're going to try and get some interviews out in Park Verme, just around the corner very shortly. As I say, where we're positioned, it's not in such a prime spot, so we don't get all the motorcycles coming ne next to us like we used to. But uh, we'll get John Moffat out there very, very shortly, and maybe catch up with a, a couple of the riders, find out how they're going. On that, I was asked yesterday, oh, could you not get a wireless camera? Um, yes, we could, but the wireless kit we need for our cameras is about £800. So if someone wants to stump up £800, we can maybe bring you some bikes next year. I mean, in the big picture things, it's not a lot of money, but it is just to sort of keep going and stuff, which I maybe use once or twice a year. Well, yeah, it's just for a little box. It's going to sit in a box for the rest of the year. Uh, um, I mean, but, you know, it's one of them things. Yeah, no, maybe, maybe, maybe at some point. We need operators to be out there to do it as well. Well, yeah, we need, we need more volunteers for that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's that vicious circle, but... Uh, yeah, no, so your comments and they say anyone wants to get involved with this and help us, it's not, it's not, it's in a begging plea by any means, but if you are sitting there thinking, well, I could do that, yeah, maybe I could get involved with that, do please, don't be, don't be backwards and coming forwards. Well, this, this is it, uh, you know, people like Sky do it, but they're, they're obviously a big multinational, multi-million pound company, uh, we're just, uh, I say a lowly uh, local radio station, but obviously we, we do what we do to the best of our abilities, which I think are, 
are pretty good, to be fair. I think I'm, I'm proud of what we can achieve. I know we mentioned it on Monday, but we're all volunteers apart from you there, aren't we? Yes. Hi. So, so everybody which comes behind the cameras in the cabin, uh, doing what we do, it's a community radio station, although it is a limited company, we are a registered charity. Indeed. And again, if, you, if you're of a younger age, uh, like school age, and obviously, well, schools are back in school now, so they're not listening. Um, but if, you, if you're interested in getting into journalism, media, sports journalism, or, or TV or radio media, this is a great way of learning, to be fair. We had a few people come through, and they're still doing it as they live into this very day. And award-winning ones at that. Award-winning presentation, yes. They certainly are. Right, shall we look at these scores for the uh, yeah, results? Yeah, the results, yesterday? yeah, for Tuesday, which was the 2nd of May, which was yesterday, um, we've been supplied with the results. Unfortunately, we weren't given the newcomers or the female categories today. That dropped off the, the scores, but we're being, uh, we've been um, assured that we will have them tomorrow. Um, the first day leader has maintained his lead. That's rider 110, uh, Dougie Lampkin, former 12 times world trials champion. He's still on one, so yesterday he went completely clear, cleaned, uh, clean sheet yesterday, no penalty points at all. In second position is Jack Peace, number 262. He's on two marks. Billy Green. Uh, one of the riders that's come up through the fields over the years, and uh, he's riding number 36 on the uh, Scorpa. He's on two marks as well. Franz Cadillac is in fourth position, number 114. Uh, he's on three marks lost. Also, Dan Peace in fifth position and three, riding number 261. Michael Brown, a uh, very competent rider. He's in sixth position on four. Uh, riding 129 on gas gas and Sam Connor, rider 142, a previous winner of the Scottish Six Days, is in seventh position on eight marks, as is Jack Challoner, um, a very, very good rider who has never really come to terms with the Scottish Six Days trial. He was tipped for the top at one time, but the no stop um, uh, type of riding in the Scottish didn't really suit him at that time. and. Uh, he didn't do a lot of long distance travel, but a very competent rider, Jack Challoner, in eighth position on eight marks. As is uh, ninth position, Chris Stay from the Isle of Wight, rider number 125, and ninth position also on eight. Uh, and uh, Thomas Minter in tenth position on 100, uh, rider number 128, also on eight marks. Um, yesterday, Gary McDonald was in tenth position, but uh, Gary's down in the results here as having 18 penalty points with a total of 23, but beside his name is the letter E for Echo, which uh, uh, means that he's a rider riding on a no award basis, which is uh, quite surprising really, and we don't know what the background to that is. I did hear some talk yesterday, and I do say it was only talk, it wasn't confirmed officially that he had somehow missed sections, and uh, having known Gary since he was a a relatively small lad. Um, he's a pretty switched on guy and, and not, not a guy to make uh, easy mistakes. Um, so I was quite surprised at that. Um, so whether it was uh, the route foxed him or something happened, I'm not quite sure, but I'm sure that we'll find out during the day what had happened to Gary MacDonald. And of course, Gary is the most successful Scottish trials rider of all time. He's got the highest number of... Uh, uh, Scottish Championships under his belt by far and also uh, as well as that is a British uh, trials champion the expert class the ACU um, and now he tends to not do so many trials he does a lot of cross-country uh, cycling and has been very very uh, competent at that as well normally finishing on the podium so um, we'll, we'll find out I'm sure through time as to what happened with Gary. 206, we're up to just leaving now, taking uh, their starting ramp. Behind you, behind did, you. Did you say 36? 206. 206, sorry, I didn't hear you. Well, so, rider number 206 is just going up onto the start ramp, so there we are. That's what we're at this morning, and it's a very nice morning. In fact, I would, I would go so far as, at the moment, it's perfect uh, riding weather at the moment. Uh, the, the clouds are high. Um, there's very little wind at the moment here in the Park Fermi and uh, the West End car park of Fort William, and um, it's not too hot, so it's it's just it's it's really good weather for for riding today. And they'll be making their way up to Callart, which is up the um, the uh, road up to Blarma Fulchach, 
it's beyond that and uh, then they go across the old Mamor Road which at one time was a main road um, and, and uh, they're going along there and then taking in Lower Mamor near the village of Kinloch Leaven, Schoolhouse Falls, Greymere's Tail, Pipeline, all situated round about Kinloch Leaven. Uh, just be careful because obviously it's a, it is a normal uh, road down to Kinloch Leaven, but it is quite a twisty road. So if you've not been down there before, just take care and uh, drive safely because obviously the, the bikes will come down to the, the main road at some point. And uh, as I say, that's the, the sort of morning action is down in Kinloch Leaven. And later in the day, they'll be back up to Witches Burn, uh, which is in the same area as, as they used yesterday which is quite unusual. Uh, they used Trotter's Burn yesterday, but I did actually drive past Witch's Burn and it was all laid out for today's run. There you go, that's what's happening. So we are down here getting some pictures now, 2.10, getting just ready to sort it out. And we'll try and catch up with a couple of riders. Can we do that at some point, do you think? John, anybody you know out there? There's nobody there that I know personally at the moment. Uh, are we looking at retires too? I think it's about uh, it's eight or nine, was it retires since the start of the race? Uh, sorry, my, my radio went off. I say retirees, we're looking about eight or nine, I think it is. I which think there are bad. about eight to ten retirees so far out of the trial, which isn't too bad. Um, there was talk yesterday that the time was tight, and I didn't actually hear much of the interview with David Dignan, if he made any mention of that, did he? No, he just said no. it was just a bit tight, but they've... Um, time. Today, yeah. Yeah. Of course, it was a new route uh, yesterday, and there was, I think, a new piece of moorland, and that's always a challenge. I always regard a, a new route at the Scottish Six Days very much as the first time they use it as like a running-in period, and even the organisers are learning about that route as to how it actually um, transposes to timings and things like that, and it must be very difficult to actually say, right, how long, what allowance are you going to give riders to cover a certain uh, part of ground? And it really, it's all down to how quickly they can go across the moor, what the conditions are like. And of course, that can change year by year just because of the weather at the time. So uh, interesting that they used uh, some new bits of ground there. And uh, I'm sure the, they'll be making notes as to what's been happening yesterday going forward for uh, subsequent years that they might use the same area uh, that they used yesterday. There you go, come back and sit down. John, do another bit of camera work. Been my multitasking. You were, See. indeed. And you, you said it was numbers... Uh, we're to nine, I think, something that's leaving at the moment. I Can't think remember. so. I'll just go and check. Hold on. 210 is just at the podium, uh, ready to start. So it must be 209 is ready to go now. Uh, we'll just see who that is, 209. Uh, here we go. Over the sheet he goes. No. It's the way it's printed it slightly. Uh, here we go. It's uh, Gary Mordew of South Shields and District Motor Club on, well, it says uh, on Montezza Honda, but uh, I'm sure that was a two-stroke that was just pulling away. It could be a, re a replacement rider, of course, uh, because when we get the list of competitors, it's not bang up to date at the start of the trial because the, the, the list of competitors is printed uh, well in advance of the trial, and, of course, people pull out and they are replaced by other riders, but that's who it says in the book is Gary Mordew but it may not be him that's just left the park for me. Rider 210 is just getting ready to start Brian McLaughlin from the Leinster MC uh, Motor Club in Ireland on a scorp, and that looks to be correct. So there we go, that's the next rider to leave. So if you're sitting having your breakfast late on, you know which rider's leaving, so you should be able to plan when you're ready to be here, hopefully. I was trying to explain to my 12-year-old 12, 12 grandson the difference between two-stroke and four-stroke, we talk about it like we know what we're talking about. Yeah. It's one of those things, I mean, it's, it, you know, general cars are four-stroke. Yeah. General motorbikes, yeah, head streamers, a lot of lawnmowers in the old days were all two-strokes. Two-strokes, yeah. Well, the difference is that uh, it's still, they're both internal combustion engines, that's what they're, they're deemed. But the uh, four-cycle motorcycle, or sorry, four-cycle engine, let's talk about engines, is uh, piston but it's got valves, so you've got an inlet valve and an exhaust valve, and that's all timed to open at certain times, and uh, uh, there's, there's four parts to that uh, cycle of the engine. Two-stroke is piston-ported. You don't have valves. You've got holes in the, the cylinder barrel which allow the uh, inlet uh, port takes in the fuel-air mixture, um, you obviously get a spark which controls the explosion which ignites the, the fuel-air mixture 
forces the piston down, turns the crankshaft, and then it's exhausted through the front normally of a two-cycle uh, engine out the exhaust port. So it sucks in the mixture and blows it out. And in the middle, there's a bang created by the spark with a spark plug using ignition, which spins the engine round and gives you the, the, the uh, rotation which then is transmitted through the transmission to the rear wheel on a motorcycle. And uh, the four-stroke um, works slightly different. It's, uh, I think, actually, the developed four-stroke before the developed two-stroke. But the funny thing is that actually uh, uh, the truckers all uh, enjoy this bit. There was a, a vehicle called the Comer Knocker Diesel, and that was a two-stroke diesel engine, uh, which was hor horizontally opposed and uh, made a, a rather screaming noise, actually, when they were on full revs. And uh, they were popular in the 1960s. Even British road services had a fleet of uh, common knockers, and um, they had a distinctive yowl, uh, you would say, yeah. uh, whereas now, you know, a diesel engine is quite a sort of low, low frequency yeah. um, a type of motor sound, but the, the common knocker, two-stroke diesel, uh, there was other ones as well, International Harvest. A lot of the American forces used them in Germany in the 1960s and early 70s. And they had this similar sort of yowl sound. It's almost like a screaming yeah. diesel, you would say. Quite exciting to listen to. Uh, but very noisy for the drivers <laughs> uh, to, to actually operate them. They must have sat in their cabs with uh, things in their ears, cotton wool or something, because they are quite a noisy engine. But if you go on YouTube and just... Uh, type in uh, Comer Knocker, you'll actually see a few, uh, I think in Australia actually, yeah. they were exported all over the world, but that was Comer, which was part of the Roots Group, and it was a Roots Group diesel that they were um, they were using, and it was uh, some of them, not all of them, but some of them were using a two-stroke diesel. So uh, that was, that was again, a piston-ported uh, diesel engine, quite different. So that's the that's the real difference between the two types. And they've got different sounds, of yeah. course. Two-stroke, uh, different sound from a four-stroke. Yeah, much higher whine, shall we say. Yeah, yeah, more of a whine than uh, a thump, thump, thump. Yeah. And a certain smell, because obviously the oil's in the fuel to lubricate. They don't have a sump, do they? A two-stroke, yeah, it works on uh, fuel air mixture, and the fuel is mixed with uh, two-stroke oil. But you also have now the likes of the Vertigo, uh, two-stroke, uh, that runs um, uh, fuel injection, okay. so it doesn't have a carburetor, but they, they use the mix in that. But uh, in the past, Yamaha, uh, with the, T, the early TY um, series, they came out, even with a little TY80, which was a, a great beginner bike, uh, developed by McAndrews, they had a separate oil tank, and they actually it had metered oil into the fuel, so you had neat petrol in the fuel tank and yeah. he had oil in the oil tank but there was always that risk that you let the oil run low in the, the oil tank and then of course there was a, a situation where you could actually seize the motor because if you run a two-stroke on neat petrol without oil it'll only go it so last far very long, it no. doesn't last I think well, it lasts yeah. a little while but not very long it depends how well the piston has been coated with the oil yeah uh, but not, not any any great distance Nothing at all it would see rs125 would it be yeah right yes yeah, why you don't have one of those they said little tank just kept that fuel with two stroke oil it was so nice when you went to the fuel station just put normal petrol in it. yeah that's right you have to remember to top, up, it, top up your two stroke that's yeah right. so that was really yeah. good but i say that i think it did have some kind of warning that it let me know that it was yeah low on it Trying an oil, yeah, but, uh, an oil. yeah I never, I, I've never had a preference to either. I think I like two stroke just for the smell and everything else. Yeah, with it. well, I, 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 um, I liked four strokes initially because that's what my father rode was the Matchless and AJS, and they were four strokes, and I thought it was a great sound. And I used to go to when I was a young boy, I used to get uh, taken along to Scrambles events, and uh. I really enjoyed if somebody had something like a matchless Matisse and it had a really deep thud as it went past you when they were racing. Uh, same with road racing as well. I, was, I remember uh, and, uh, when I was quite a very small boy going to watch the, um, the North West... It was not, wasn't the North West 200, my apologies. It was the Ulster Grand Prix, one of the fastest road races in the world as well. And uh, that was a way back in about 1961, I think it was, and it was they were still racing four strokes then, you know, seven R AGSs, G fifty matches, Manx Norton's that sort of thing. And it was really the four stroke I enjoyed. But when I took up trials, um it was or when I took up riding competition bikes, it was uh, two strokes that I rode 
and it was only in uh, later life that uh, in classic trials used the matchless four stroke and uh, latterly the four stroke uh, Montezza Cota. Right, OK. Just got a message coming through we need to deal with very shortly. Nothing to do with, with on air. Thank you, Simon. Uh, we'll get that sorted out. And I was just... Uh, one thing, I always think, what bike would I have again, which I've you know, got rid of, I regret getting rid of. Mine would be a uh, 400 Super Dream Honda. Oh, yeah, the Honda Super Loved Dream. Loved yeah, Very popular Loved bike. It's so day. comfy and yeah. it just said something about it. That had a certain sound. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, right. And, and in there coming collector's models now. What about you? What is your one bike you would... You, you, what, what, what bike haven't you got now which you really like? <sighs> I don't That's know. a toughie. Um, what have I not got that I would like? Uh, it's a difficult one. It would, yeah. it would probably be a road bike, I think, more than a competition bike yeah. now because I've, I've had most. Um, I would, a bit bizarre, but I'd, I'd really like a BSA Gold Star. Um, an old bike. Um, obviously, they, they raced them, they, they scrambled them, the trials rode them. And it's just something about a clubman's goal there. I would probably like one of them, yeah. but they're a bit finicky. They're difficult to start and they're a bit a bit twitchy. Um, but I'd probably quite like one of those. You know. yeah. As a, as a non bike person, I think I'd want a chopper. You know, those ones you sit back on. I think yeah. that would suit me. Uh, well, I've never been into choppers. I admire the workmanship they go into some of these hogs. I mean, uh, some really beautiful bikes. I mean, I'm involved with the Scottish Motorcycle Show now in the classics. Uh, side of things, I do that every March now, or have done for a couple of years, and um, I enjoy looking to see what's being entered, and I'm thinking, oh, that'll be nice. And uh, there's some really uh, exotic machinery uh, arrived this year in March at uh, Ingleston at the Royal Highland Centre, and uh, some amazing bikes. And there was, they also have in the Highland Hall uh, built, not bought, which is custom bikes. And it's not my scene, but, you know, some lovely motorcycles put yeah. together by people and they put a lot of uh, attention to detail on these, but a lot yeah. of time into it. And you've got to respect that, even though, although you're not into maybe choppers or whatever, or custom bikes, when you look at them, you think, wow, that's, that's yeah. something else. And some of the paint jobs they're doing now, it's so just mind-blowing. So yeah, yeah exactly. absolutely incredible. Uh, but uh, would I have one in my garage? No, no. no. But... Uh, Take just up to look at style when you get three bikes in the place of that one. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. Got to think about these things. No, I've got a couple, I suppose. Yeah, you're yeah, doing all right, and you're, yeah. you're doing all right. Yeah. How's your raffle going for that one you put in? Oh, is that good? Mm. Sold many tickets? <laughs> <laughs> Some people thought you were serious, I think. Yeah, a bit yeah. of a wind up. Yeah. But I've, I obviously have my, uh, my uh, the background thoughts, and you can't keep them all. No. But uh, it's a bike I've used 16 times in the pre 65, yeah. but I don't tend to use it now, and no. it's gathering dust. But however, I did drag out another match this other day uh, to get it fettled ready for the road. A road match, there's 1954 road matches I've, I've had for a lot of years. I bought it as a basket tape case, but I had it professionally restored, uh, but that was back in 1983. Took it out, drained the sump because it had filled with oil, but unfortunately it just would not start. And I thought, nah, something wrong here. The magneto's gone, sulky, and true enough, went down to a local firm to be checked over, and they said, nah, your mag's uh, yeah. kaput. Um, so it's a way to a specialist rebuilder, but you know you're not you're talking about a lot of money to get a magneto rebuilt now. That's the downside of it, which is a pity. But it's got to be done because you don't have a spark, it won't go. People have got no idea what you're talking about because it's, it's almost another generation ago now, isn't it? Yeah, well they they don't make uh, vehicles with magnetos uh, now. Never have done since the sort of uh, <laughs> mid '60s. I think yeah. they started to go out. And it's a very, very specialist job to rewind a magneto. Or they haven't actually stripped it yet. They've had a quick look, and uh, the chap said uh, the points are opening. So I'm not sure how that operates inside the mag, because I've never been inside one. They've always been reconditioned. I did have a spare mag, but it was a, a, a Lucas racing magneto, and it's a, a bit kind of higher class than is needed for a, a, a road-going single, so I didn't put it on. Uh, I just sent, I had the, the Magneto sent away down south to be looked at professionally. So I'm just waiting on the, this, uh, the assessment, the assessment of that at the moment. But no, you've got to get it sorted out. Well, I'll tell you what, we need to maybe catch up with some bits and pieces back at the studio, I'm guessing. Just a bit. Any, any messages? Um, no, just, just people entered today's competition, uh, which is good. I say I've passed on a new message to you, but that's not really yeah, for us, that's for someone else. Um, and yeah, that's kind of what we're up to, really. That's right. 
John's just reading the message now, don't worry. All right. Sorry, you can't read it. That's the bottom one. Uh, um, I'll let yeah. you sort that one out, John. I just need to pick a tune. Yeah, you can have a tune. Oh, I can have a tune. Yeah, have a tune. I was thinking, what's that? What's the name Rosa at that piano 90s feeling tune? Uh, Rosa, Rosa, Rosa. Um, you, you, only highlighted probably about three, four weeks to me. I've got it on there. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think now. She's, she's had a couple, hasn't she? Eliza yeah. Rose, that's it. And that is a great sound. Loved it. Uh, I like sample stuff from the 90s, I believe. Yeah, it is, it is. It's got that feel about it, and uh, it's, it's, it's catchy, it's upbeat. Yeah, OK, well, we'll do some adverts. We'll play that, and we'll be back. Brilliant. The Clownsman Garage in Camagill. Our mountains, glens and waterways are some of the best in Scotland, if not the world. Breathtaking views and awe-inspiring landscape. Adventures for us all. Come and explore our water and mountains. It will make you feel alive. by the river, barges on the canal, or even a luxury castle. They all share the common theme of being surrounded by stunning views and incredible scenery here in the harbour. Rest assured, we are doing everything we can to keep you safe during your stay. We can't wait to welcome you.
tire is such an important part of your bike. It's the only part which touches the ground. And when you get that perfect combination, it's hard to beat. The Michelin tires have been perfect for me. I've been running the DH22 on the front and the DH34 on the back. And it's a really good combination yeah, between grip and rolling. Indeed. Mr. Moffat's gone wandering, talking to the ladies. How about that? Nothing new there. He's just disappeared around the corner. So I'm going to talk to ladies. Okay, John. As you do. Uh, I'll just uh, share the post on our Facebook page, actually. Uh, and Cafe Mara, our, our digital media sponsor, they've actually just announced something pretty cool coming up next Monday between 4 and 6 p.m. Oh, yes. Uh, limited tickets, yep. uh, £20 on the door, and uh, that money being split between uh, two uh, causes of Kamali and Co. and also, like I say, community councils. And they've got Callum McPhail live in concert for a couple of hours. A good local artist, and it'll be a good uh, few hours of music. Aye, well, he's, he's got new tunes out, hasn't he? They're, yes. they're doing quite well, so yes. uh, it should, should be a good wee uh, session for a couple of hours there. Worth a shot. Hi, Young Johns. How about that for an intro, then? Uh, both of you. I'd love to have an entry to win your Hebo fuel tank, so we all know how many sections of ridden it is. Da, da, da. And all those clever riders who can clean every one of them. Now, come on, give those ladies a mention. They are super girls, all of them. All my love, Joan. That's Joan Westbrook, yeah. From, the well, thing is, we've... she calls herself. Uh, <laughs> all right, OK. <laughs> from Sussex. Um, so it's Joan from Sussex, is it? Yeah, my, my part of the world. Sussex, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah we, we will be mentioning the, the uh, female riders at Scottish. Unfortunately, we don't have the results for the females this morning. Um, so we hope to have that sorted by tomorrow. Uh, we were speaking to the secretary, uh, Kirsten Pennycook there, who will be coming to join us in, in just a little while. She was doing a little bit of sweeping up there out in the car park because they like to keep it nice and tidy. And of course, when the riders are working on the bikes, um, the, the dirt falls out of the wheels and that, they have a wee bit of clean up. So then they go behind and brush it all up onto a bucket and spade and away into the bin. So uh, yeah, a bit, of, a bit of tidying going on there. I've always said how clean they do keep this place though, because there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of gaffer tape. There's bits and pieces flying all over the place. Yeah, and it's all got to be cleaned yeah, up all, because there's obviously... There's always a team there cleaning it up. Yeah, every day because they don't let it lie about because obviously it's a municipal car park yeah. most of the time here, um, all the time, in fact, apart from Scottish six days a week. So they like to keep it uh, kept swept. And uh, uh, it's actually cleaner the car park when they leave and yeah. when they come here because obviously dirt falls off cars in a car park that's what it's designed to collect but uh, it's amazing what gets dumped on the ground in, in, in public car parks you know no, uh, and it all gets it all, well this bit all gets brushed up and so in the, the service areas that you have there Montez and Beta and Gas Gas and everybody they all do their little sweep ups every night as well just to keep the place tidy does that, does that include it when they uh, sweat horsepower as well? When they what, sorry? When they sweat horsepower. Sweat horsepower? Yeah, oil leak. Oh, well, uh, oil leaks are different. They've actually got to be controlled for environmental now, with drip mats and things like that. It's all gone technical over the last 20 years. So, yeah, oil's, uh, oil's got to be discharged into a receptacle and taken away to a, a place where they um, recycle it all. Unless you've got an old BSA bent and they're just going to leak oil full stop all the way through, aren't they? Well, any of the old, uh, the <laughs> old bikes tend to leak oil. So if, if they stop leaking oil, that means they've run out. Yeah, they've run out. Well, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, no. Um, we've got the Army boys behind us. How does that operate? Are they doing this for the Army or do the Army, the army give them time off and sponsor them? How's it all work? Do you know? I'm not really quite sure how it operates with the Army. There are Army riders in the event um, who are effectively sponsored by the Army. Um, so there's a, the teams there are actually riding for the services award. And of course, these, uh, there's an, a an element of the army undertake the refueling yeah. of the Scottish Six Days trial. Um, it, it, it's, it, it's always been a difficult situation because in 2002, at the end of the 2002 trial, the British Army actually uh, contacted the committee of the Edinburgh District Club and said that they weren't going to do it anymore. And then uh, that was reverted the year after. Uh, they've got a different part of the army to do it. Um, so uh, the problem is that using the services is always a bit difficult because um, if something happens, then they're pulled away, um, not on the manoeuvres, but actually into war zones yeah. and things like that. So then personnel and equipment can be pulled away. But uh, I don't think they use so much um, army equipment as they did maybe 20 years ago. Um, it seems to be a lot more um, equipment being used by uh, car and vehicle rental companies uh, to distribute the, the fuel to the fuel checks. 
Uh, there's no longer a fuel tanker here anymore, no. which there used to be, and there used to be Bowsers. Um, there's no Bowsers now, they're not fueled by Bowsers. So it has changed over the years, and that's probably because a lot of the equipment is is maybe now redundant or not used out in the field. I mean, I know that they used to use it as a, an exercise, Operation Highland Trot, some years ago, and that was to refuel tanks in the field, and it actually was good training for the military to do so. But uh, apparently they don't fuel tanks in the war zones the way that they used to, apparently. I don't know exactly how they do it, but I presumed it was from jerry cans, but they're maybe doing it differently now. Everything changes. Ev as everyone go. likes a full tank, John. They certainly do. I've not heard the word Bowser since, was it Boys in the Black stuff? Oh, that would be right enough. That was a while ago. That was uh, Yozer Hughes. Yozer Hughes. Yozer Television program. Kevin White Watman, what his name was, Whiteman? Yeah, that's right. Kevin Wat Watley? Whaley? Whaley. 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 Yeah. Whaley. You, you obviously Whaley. need to play some more Mario Brothers on the old Nintendo then. That's the bad guy. Is it? Is it? Yeah, oh. Bowser, he's the bad oh, guy. I see. Jimmy Nail, he was in it, wasn't he? Jimmy Nail. Yeah, and he went on to become Crocodile a shoes. pop star. Yeah, yeah. yeah, see? It all falls into place now. <laughs> the trip down memory lane. It does indeed. Uh, do we need to sponsor our I mention our sponsors or sponsor our mentors? What do you want to do? Uh, Thistle Access for the, the um, well, what's it called? I'm calling it the uh, technical trailer. Technical trailer. Uh, we've got Comms West for the internet connections. Um, the Is it Fort William Hire Centre? Yep. Um, and we've got uh, obviously the main ones, which is Mitchell and Tires and uh, Trial Magazine. Uh, and also for the awning this year, sponsored by Gavin Cairns Roughcasting, who's also taken care of the sustenance for the crew at Nevis Radio down here at the uh, Park Fermi. Um, I've forgotten somebody now. Who have I forgotten? I think that's it, mate. The Higher Centre. We've done them. Did that. Trials Guru. Cuddly Toy. Cuddly Toy. Fondue set. Staff. We need a fondue set. That's all we need. Ah, um, I don't know. I don't I, know. You must. I think that's. I think that's everybody covered. Yeah, and we've got Dan the man in the trailer. Hello, Dan. Dan's in the trailer. We've got a drone flying out here. I'm trying to get a picture of the drone. That'd be quite cool. See if I can do this. Oh, he has a drone right above the radar. He's at been the uh, buzzing around all day. I don't, I, I don't, I don't know who's you. operating. I'm probably on this camera now, so I'm going to upset Dan. He hates this. I wonder if you if you know who's operating it. Don't know. Just one over there. So if we had more people, we do kind of have a method to get something like that working. There you go. What, a drone, you mean? Yeah. Have you got to have a licence for a drone? You do indeed. I've just got one. There's two people down there with a licence, John. Yeah, well... I literally got one two weeks ago. So exactly. Yeah, actually Once he started operate, filming it, they've flown away. Yeah, he's gone away. So that's interesting. I don't know why. Maybe he was subversively spying. <laughs> there he is. Was it a spy drone? That's the man. Go on, check his license. Uh, is that the man? Or yeah. is it somebody working that's his him, mobile him, phone? There's the remote. Our Dan, who's doing that, is licensed and insured drone operator, by the way. For your drone needs. Eh? There you go, I'm going to bill you for that. I'm sure that's somebody with the army, you know. He, he might be. He's I think he's, he's with the him. army. Anyway, so that's what's happening. This so is that's the maybe army a military behind drone. This, this is what they're doing. So I don't know what's actually on going out moment, but there you go. See if it was a military drone, John. You were about to see it, it'd be camouflage. It's very That's quick. It's, very, it's a very sporty drone. Is it? Yeah. Of course, there was an incident a couple of years ago at um, airports with people flying drones near them, wasn't there? And yeah, it was a news item. I think they have oh, stopped yeah. it now. Yeah. They have ways of blocking you. It was, it so, was it's also advisable naughty. not to fly a kite near an airport, especially with a tinfoil tail. They don't like that. Oh, oh right. See, all this helpful advice. Not something I would be in. Public information service. In. <laughs> and we, meant, uh, we mentioned the refueling, but when... I've been looking, there's bot great bot bottles of water going out. Who are these for? These for the... Riders. Riders. For the riders, okay. Yeah, it's at the uh, fuel stops. They went out stops. on the army truck as well. The fuel stops, um, I've been past one or two of them, uh, and they have fuel, obviously, two-stroke and fuel... Sorry, two-stroke and four-stroke fuel, and they have water for the riders. The one thing that did disturb me slightly was I haven't seen a fire extinguisher at them, which is unusual. Yes. I thought under health and safety regs, if you're disp dispensing fuel, regardless what it's for, you should have some sort of fire suppressant. So I did look, and I did actually ask somebody, yeah. where's your fire ex? Because I was a health and safety rep for 
uh, trade union at one time. Going to talk to Simon. And uh, I'm sure yeah. we were told that if you were using any kind of inflammable liquid, you should have an appropriate fire extinguisher. Yeah. So that's something maybe to look into. Oh, it's simple, John. If it goes on fire, run away. That's it. That's all you need to know. <laughs> Well, check well, that's, that's that's the that's yeah, exactly. Make sure you yeah. get the insurance policy. Happily, it doesn't happen no. very often, but uh, yeah, it's like you go to a, a fuel station, I'm sure they've got them. They've obviously yeah. got the buckets of sand as well. Yeah. What you're supposed to do with that, God only knows, but uh, I think it's that's, that's more for soaking up that's the for dripping, fuel dripping yeah. fuel lakes, yeah. But uh, certainly at fuel stations, they have uh, fire extinguishers kicking around, I think. Well, in the next hour, we need to look through see what's in your lunchbox today. We haven't done that. Oh, yes. Yes. I haven't sure seen exciting. it either. I no, don't know. No, it's always it. a surprise to you. That is a bit of a We've surprise. We've got this competition going for these Hebo, is that how you pronounce it? Hebo, Hebo. Auxiliary Fuel Tank. Yeah, it's here. It's uh, on display here at the uh, studio in the park, there, right? Yeah. Outside broadcast. And it's uh, supplied by the importers of Hebo uh, equipment. Uh, that's a Pico Factory Racing. Uh, they supply the trade with um, all these goodies. And the question is, how many sections are ridden each day at the Scottish Six Days Trial? So, um, do we have many people in for that? Did we find out if there's a few people in? Yeah, I've got quite a few in for that just now. Jones cool. entered. Don't forget to put Jones' name down. Yep. Oh, you need to send me the details in. Yeah, I will do. Put Joan. Okay. Uh, right, done. Uh, but yeah, no, if you do want to enter that one, uh, phone number 01397 706 100. You can WhatsApp us on the exact same number and then uh, we can pick up that way. Email the studio at studio at nevisradio.co.uk. If you're phoning me now, I'm talking. Just hang on a minute. Um, <laughs> I love that. I, it's just how it goes. Uh, you yeah. can get us on Facebook, Nevis Radio Official. You can uh, get us directly on there as well. And I say you can uh, have a live chat on our YouTube page at youtube.com forward slash Nevis Radio Official where you can see exactly what's going on down at Park Farming at the moment. And you listen to us and want that special little present for somebody, don't forget the uh, Never Tried It merchandise available from Gallery in the Fort in the town centre. There's mugs, there's coasters, key rings and tote bags. Um, Beach has been uh, supplied and sponsored by the Boys and Girls. I'm going to call them Boys and Girls from Gallery in the Fort. I can't remember the last time Gwyn would have been called a boy. It's all gone quiet. Leave me out to dry, guys. Go on. <laughs> I didn't know what you were talking about. That merchandise, look. Oh, yes. Oh, the merchandise. Yes. yes, I've seen that. The key yeah. rings there and yeah. the, the coaster and the mug and so on. So yes. Very, very snazzy. Very nicely very done. Nice. Very, very posh. Yeah. Very posh like indeed. That. Um, but uh, it's, it's, it's just the only place you can get them. Sorry, you talking to me there. Well, yeah, yeah they, I'm trying to have a two-way conversation with one person. Well, I was on the phone. Oh, yeah. People are in competitions and stuff, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, who was it? Anybody we know? Uh, he's entered every day so far, so. All right. Name check. Uh, Sam. Morning, Hi, Sam. Sam. There you go. Uh, tell you what we could do though. Uh, quick advert catch up. Yes. Do you don't want to do a tune as well? No, nah, we'll just do advert catch up and straight back to you if that's all right. Yeah, perfect. Cool. Are you a first time buyer or an existing homeowner and looking for mortgage and protect?
Oh, can't we play with my phone messaging you, actually, funny enough? That's how we communicate when we're down here. Well, there's, there's, there's a multitude of different things I'm getting thrown at me at the minute. <laughs> oh, it all happens at once. And it, it is a balancing act back in the studio. People think you're just sitting there pushing buttons. People fact, think I, I do that anyway. But... I think David needs to spend some time with you because I say he was here yesterday. He said, so what's the side doing? Just push play music. I said, yeah, just about. Yeah, something like that. I think I'm more on about nine different feeds, all of which are very active, yeah. as well as the video, time, music, everything else. And you have to monitor it so you know what we're doing. I mean, we used to sort of try and communicate, but I don't do that so much these days with messaging, but uh, you're monitoring what we're doing down here, what's going out, what's coming in. Yeah. And uh, I say Dan's at the other end of all that sort of stuff, so between you and your communicating, I'm trying to send messages, but yeah, asking for tunes and bits and pieces. Um, and it, it, it's a balancing act. Yes, very much so. Juggling plates while you're spinning something else, with balls or something, I don't know. It's, it's very much a challenge, uh, but it's, it's a fun challenge, albeit stressful. Yeah, no, it is. And you get home and say so when you do actually sit down and think, OK, that was a good day, and you start reflecting and you think, yeah, we did a lot, but my goodness, the brain's frazzled. Yeah, um, but then again, I've, I've watched a bit of the footage back and it's like, I'm, I'm pleased with that. Yeah, no, exactly. And they say, thanks for bearing with us over the last couple of days, but you've got it a lot better today. It's, uh, it's a nice, clean electrical feed, which is good. Yeah, well, I think that's where most of our problems have stemmed from is uh, power supply. But I, I think, uh, yeah, today's good. Thank and you very much to <coughs> yeah, we, we, Robert from Vessel. We relied on something else and it didn't work. Yeah. Um, yeah not going to blame anybody or point fingers, but we will. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not a case of blame. It's just a case of trying new things. doesn't yeah. quite work out and go back to plan A. But a uh, big thank you to Robert again from Vessel Access for that one, for sorting us out with a new generator for that. It's, yes, uh, and the guy running down, it wasn't different. rude yesterday, because he was down here. I think I was actually live on air and he was trying to get my attention and signalling to me. He brought it down. Uh -huh. I said, oh, just, just go around the bring it around there to say the uh, I think Dan and uh, David sorted it out in the end but I never actually spoke to the guys so whoever it was thank you very much I think it was Robert it's one of his workers yeah indeed aye uh, but no um, we'll be a bit stuck without uh, Robert's help uh, from Fessel so yeah. big thanks and I know a few other people got in contact with the technical side of things and why it's happening which is it's just helpful to know yes yeah I, I spoke to many people on that one yesterday yeah. but I say that was yesterday this is today well aye. I'm not going to dwell on it but you learn that's what it's about living and learning live learn develop Charlie, you like your challenge you just said that yeah yeah. <laughs> it's coming to four minutes to ten o'clock. Where's Edit. he gone? I don't know. John. He's got, he's got, John's going to talk to ladies again. Oh. He's busy giving it autographs, isn't he? Well, he just goes around the corner which where the ladies are in the nice warm hut. They're not actually they're doing, they're doing sweeping up and cleaning up. All right, is he passing on the, the stuff that needs to be passed on? Yes, but we could, if without a rider's number, there's not a lot we can do, but they will might take a note that riders have been doing what you've asked to yeah, said about it. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, he said we can't really do much about it because there's no, you know, you can't ident identify anybody from that. No, no, indeed. Uh, but I think that's where he's gone. So, uh, yeah, we'll be taken on board and uh, probably at some briefing at some point it'll be brought up. Okay, that's, that's all good. But, yeah, because I say, obviously, everything's monitored, just not the riders, but the spectators, the support team and everybody else. It's, uh, you know, it is a high visibility sport in the area and some people are doing things they shouldn't be doing. Indeed, yeah. Um, I'm just going through. I got an email actually last minute yesterday. I've just kind of refound it again, um, saying uh, doing a great job, uh, keep it up. But also, um, good morning to rider number one three six from uh, Paul Bolton's mum, Joe. Okay, yeah, they went off early this morning. They're yeah. off, so yeah. Hopefully they're doing okay. Hopefully. Hopefully they're going to doing okay. And I say, wherever we are in the world, whatever time it is, it's great to have you listening to us at Nevis Radio and trying to bring that bit of taste of the Scottish Six Days trial. Well, talking of time around the world, uh, I've not managed to get a chat with uh, Bernie yet. I'm trying to get that sorted out. Uh, but I'll tell you what we can do is... We'll do it while we're live, because that's how we can go. It's currently 5.57 in Bermuda. Oh, there you go. So he's going to be up early. Yeah. yeah. OK, that's fine. So he's obviously an early riser for that yeah, one. The, the man is back. You, you, you've been speaking to the ladies again, haven't you? Are you a ladies man? Yes, I was just setting up our next interview in the next sort of five-ish minutes. Yeah. Because up to there, we'll be having news. Uh, we will at radio 10 o'clock, yes. Three minutes or, well, two minutes, actually. Yeah, just done a refresh on the competition. So we'll be after then. Yeah, yeah, more interest on the competition. That'll work out fine. Uh, uh, have we got a managed to get a link to the Bahamas? Not, not yet. yet. No, we're working no. on that one. OK. Yeah, we've, we've, we've just spoken about that. Right, so well, that, that's, that's, that's in hand. Oh, it is hand. We're working right. on it. Okay. I'm um, trying to get that sorted out. And it's, you're, you're getting a bit agitated. 
No, no, I was just uh, stretching my legs, that was all. I have to do it. Oh, well, I went up and did a bit of filming, then stretch. Ah. It's quite nice having, we, you know, in the early days, it was standing for four hours in bleak, cold weather, and this is quite nice, isn't it, now? Yeah, we never had seats before. No. We were always standing. It was like four hours standing, and it was pretty sore on the feet and yeah. the backs of the legs. It's the legs. Like it is the yeah. legs. Definitely. Yeah. Well, have we got a quick tune or are we going to talk up to the news? What do you want to do? Hey, if you can talk up to the news, you've only got a minute and a bit. A minute and a bit. That's what, two and a half minutes? No, a minute and a bit. Um, coming up, so we'll have another look at the route as well. Yeah. And Aussie's own recap on the scores, so much to fit in between now. And don't forget the competition for the Hebo Auxiliary Fuel Tank. Yes. How are they fixed? Are they strapped on? Uh, zip tied on. Actually, yeah. they go against the front forks. There's actually oh, special indentation, indentation on the back. In the back. See that and then they, they zip tie through there. And of course, try get rid of, try and break a zip tie. It's pretty it's near impossible. Mm -hmm. So they're actually very firmly fitted to the machine. They don't have to be bolted on. Uh, the zip tie is more than competent. Uh, but you use, use one of the thicker ones, as you can see. Yeah. There's a little special hole for oh, the uh, yeah. zip tie to go through. It's yeah. neat, yeah. It's all there. And, and so one of these goes into the tank one that's the fuel breather, is that the way yeah, it works? Yeah, you, so you put, don't you get put that into the breather of the fuel tank yeah. and then that's a breather itself. And there's a little a little bit there for attaching the keeper for the front brake as well. So it's a keeper. It's all, it was a keeper. It just uh, holds the front brake uh, hose in place, oh, right. stops it waggling right, like about in front of it. Yeah, a like a clip. Right, there yeah. you go, a keeper. Yeah. Keeper. It is Nevis Radio. We are broadcasting right through this six days tour right up till Saturday. After the news, we go now here with our friends at RN. From 96.6 to 102. players. You will never be stuck for things to do and places to see throughout Le Havre. Experience the abundance of history, emerge yourself in a movie scene, walk within our great outdoors and see our wildlife running free. Rain or shine, there is always something to do. Get out and enjoy all the incredible things we have to offer right here in Le Havre. Can you can you reply to my uh, Facebook message? Oh, because I, I need to figure out. Want to talk can, on the phone can, in a minute, can you, can you text him on his mobile? Because that's what I got back. I don't I have that, John. Oh no, I gave you. Did you? Oh yeah. All right. Okay, oh, that's uh, way back in my message. I'll go digging. I don't if know. Not, how, I don't know how to give you that without doing it online. That's fine. Now, well, if you give that to Dan, Dan can send it to Sai. I'll, I'll I'll sort it out. If I, I go oh, digging, yeah. I'll find it. God dear. I'll get the old tin can out with a bit of wire string, that'll work. Oh, can I work? We could ever hear that. I remember them. Yeah, good. It used to be good fun. 
So here we are then into the final hour of this Wednesday's broadcast from us here at Nevis Radio. We're going up until 11 o'clock. As we've got a couple of interviews lined up, we've got the uh, secretary coming in very shortly. She should have been in uh, about five minutes' time, I would reckon, yeah. And uh, then you've got Bernie. All being well, 10.30. Bernie's ready in the Bahamas. Sure is. Mm. I was looking for a bit of paper to write that number down. I'll write it on there. I'm just going to oh, I'll yeah. do the weather in a minute. I'll, I'll tell, oh, I'll do the, can good. we do the weather now? Get yeah, that'll right. do. Yeah. Then you're going to have your weather report. Oh, right. Uh, do the weather, go yeah. for tune, and then come back to us. I have been asked for so many different things right now. Juggle, I, juggle, juggle, yeah, fire walking. I, and I, I, look, I'm a man. I can't do that. You right? can. You can do it, Simon. I've been... Come on. Let's work with this together. Just let's talk it through. OK, right. I've got the weather sorted out. Did you see what the tune after that? Yeah, tune after. Where shall we go right now? I fancy something... Oh, calling the gang. Start with a K. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what should we go for? Ladies' night, why not? Uh, oh, fresh is better. Ladies' night, why, why not? Oh, for John? Yeah. Yeah, OK. Um, right, how about we do that? We're doing have a break, because otherwise you'll forget. Yeah, yep. we, well, we've got a couple of chats coming up as well, so yeah, we'll get that through the weather, add break tune, or whatever we really want to do it, then come back to us. Yeah, OK, right. Uh, what button do I need to press now? I need to press that one. Today's weather on Nevis Radio, brought to you by Thistle Access. Rather cloudy, but staying dry for much of the morning. Patchy light rain developing by the early afternoon. This will extend to the rest of the area by late in the afternoon. Light southeasterly winds with a maximum high of 15 degrees centigrade, 59 Fahrenheit. Going to tonight, cloudy with light rain or drizzle. Turning drier as we head into the late evening, but then more rain coming by the end of the night. Minimum overnight low, 5 degrees centigrade, 41 Fahrenheit. And Thursday, a fair day's weather for most, if not all staying dry by day with occasional sunshine. Feeling rather pleasant away from the east coast where the north-south winds will freshen. Your maximum high for Thursday, 15 degrees centigrade, same as today at 59 Fahrenheit. That was today's weather on Nevis Radio. Brought to you by Thistle Access. From lodges by the river, barges on the canal, or even a luxury castle, they all share the common theme of being surrounded by stunning views and incredible scenery here in Lochaber. Rest assured, we are doing everything we can to keep you safe during your stay. We can't wait to welcome you.
for the players. You will never be stuck for things to do and places to see throughout Le Havre. Experience the abundance of history, emerge yourself in a movie scene, walk within our great outdoors and see our wildlife running free. Rain or shine, there is always something to do. Get out and enjoy all the incredible things we have to offer right here. In Mojave. Cause you woke up in the morning with initiative to move, so I make it harder. Think about it, so many people do be cool and look smooth. The world time has come to. Working for business in the outdoor capital of the UK. This is day three of the Scottish Six Day Trial. It is indeed day three. Park firm, a rider about 260, I think, is leaving at the moment, something like that. Round about that, just yeah. ready to go, yeah. Um, I think we've got Dan Peace on the Sherco, riding under the army um, this year. Um, so, yeah, that's the numbers we're at just now. And uh, in a wee minute, we'll be having a quick word with uh, the secretary of the Scottish Six Days Trial, Kirsten Pennycook, who is, uh, who is also the secretary of the Dunfermline District Motorcycle Club. So she gets involved with um, the annual trials of that particular organisation based in Fife. Uh, so she should be joining us shortly. She's just uh, away just now to the office to sort out a problem with a, uh, one of the new scanners that they're using. We can maybe ask her a, a little bit about that because there is a new system in the um, Scottish Six Days where they've got electronic scoring, uh, which must help them no end. So uh, hopefully she'll be back here very shortly. And at 10.30, we'll be uh, hooking up uh, with uh, Bernie Schreiber in the Bahamas, hopefully. So hopefully we'll get that link uh, sorted out. Well, maybe next uh, year we can maybe fly over there and do our reporting from there. That'd be quite nice. Well, I'll run the studio from over there. No, no, no. You need to be there. You're you're the hub of that area. Ah, uh, we'll drag it all over. <laughs>
<laughs> um, but no, to, to answer your question, John, I've had a chat with Bernie. We've got we've got it all sussed. I'll get my call back shortly and we'll get that sorted out. Yeah, no problem. Excellent. That's really good. And if you want to get in contact with us, you've got about another 30 minutes. The phone lines for the competition will be open for about another 10 minutes only because it'll be nice to close that before we really chat to Bernie. Then we'll pull up. Maybe Bernie can pick the winner then. Yeah, can do. We should work for that one. So that'll be the plan. So 10 minutes for the competition to win that uh, fuel tank. If you want to take part, cool. do get in contact with Cy at the studio there. Right, here we go then. Yeah, After here we a are. crisis for back in the hub. The 2023 you. interview with Kirsten Pennycook uh, from uh, just in Fife, she lives now, and uh, Secretary of the Dunfermline District Motorcycle Club as well for Certainly your sins. Am. Now, tell us a little bit about the uh, the new system that you're using at the Scottish Six Days Trial this year, the electronic scoring. How oh. does that work? You okay, must know so, about that. Um, the new scoring system is one that we're, it's been um, set up and the ACU put it in place. So the clubs down in the ACU have been using this for a bit of time. Um, we've then taken that on and um, adapted it and uh, using it now for the Scottish Six Days. So great, we're getting more instantaneous results. Um, it's just brilliant. Um, so I read a... I read a Sorry, I better switch my microphone on. Uh, I read a report or a new, uh, sorry, press release from the SSU saying that it had been funded by Events Scotland. Is that correct? Yep, we've got Events Scotland on board with us this year, so it's yeah. been great. It's been okay. very helpful in uh, helping us. And this will help speed the process of getting the results all pulled together now, I presume? Yep, but it's more the fact that you no, know, every entry that's made on these systems, they're date and time stamped, so mm -hmm. it's, it's very accurate. We can also see where the riders are progressing you know, through the trial. Um, sometimes the devices might be in areas where there is no connectivity, so but it stores it on the device and then when it gets connectivity, it downloads it straight away. So Sounds a bit like a text message. If you're out of zone, yeah. it then holds it and then when you go back online or you get a signal, the, the whole thing comes yeah. streaming through. Oh, that's good. And the, the observers, they all have an individual sort of... Yeah, it's a handheld device. It's slightly bigger than a phone, but yeah. much the same sort of size as right. a sort of larger like a sort of style tablet phone. or something like yeah, that. Not yeah, not quite as big as a sort of tablet. But In between a mobile yeah. and a tablet. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, so it's great. Now, you've been Secretary of the Scottish Six Days. Is this your third this Scottish? This is my third, yeah. I started yeah. in 2019. Yeah. And still enjoy it? Yeah. Yeah. And of course nowadays you've got you've got more things running around the background because you've got a son who's riding in the World Series as well, yeah, which yeah. must use up an awful lot of time and money and resource and so on it's and so right. forth. It's just been a fantastic experience so far. Yeah. I mean, it's just been superb. I mean, two weekends ago we were in Portugal. Mm -hmm. you know, the weekend before that we were in Spain. Yeah. So uh, it's just yeah. You don't often get the chance to do these things, so no, you no. just grab it when you can. So. Absolutely. And do you have a day job? Um, I do. Um, it's just a bit more flexible, so right. we're kind of sort of self-employed, and uh, yeah, we can sort of put that to the side. Good. And John, can I ask a question? Oh, hold on. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, uh, you mentioned there about the electronic scoring and stuff. Is there plans to maybe have it sort of kind of live updates to a website at all? Uh, it was Simon was asking, is it because it's the electronic score, and you, are you planning to have it to, what was it again? To, to update live to, to a website for like real-time updates. Website in real time. The, at the moment, we're updating live on the event app that we have right. um, on Sportity. Um, so that's coming in there um, live. So. And can the public access that app, or is it just riders only? Uh, it's mainly riders and their support crew that are doing it, so uh -huh. sorry, John, I'm going to have to actually... Um, OK, right, well, thanks very much, Kirsten Pennycook. She's got a wee bit of a crisis to attend to as that these things happen uh, as, as as live. Um, so uh, Kirsten's had to nip back to the office, which is really just behind us here in the car park this year. Um, and again, uh, not only the electronic timing uh, was... Um, uh, grant aided by Events Scotland, but also some of the facilities for the new um, race centre here in the Park Fermi. So they've actually got an office 
that's been lowered into place just behind us here at Nevis Radio. It must be nicer for them to be actually in the hub of this area rather than in a hotel room, you know, half a mile away or a mile away. It's yeah. going to be nicer for them to get that atmosphere. Very well. much so. Down every morning anyway. Yeah. I mean, it's quite a distance, obviously, from the car park in the west end of Fort William up to the headquarters, which is uh, the Ben Nevis Hotel. Um, and uh, certainly... Um, there's, there's, there's staff here at the car park now which they didn't have before. They, they had, you know, observers and officials in a porter cabin here, but that was really more for the uh, the, the riders to get their, their um, time cards issued, etc., and, and, and take them <coughs> take them back in at night. Uh, but having the secretary on site here in the park fermi is, uh, I think, a bit of a benefit to, yeah, as far so. as I can see. Um, certainly it's adding to the, the event, but having uh, one of the top officials on site and uh, obviously it looks like it will be a permanent fixture now. Obviously we're getting some grant-aided work from uh, Event Scotland, which covers a plethora of, of different events throughout uh, the Scottish area. Yeah, no, I know she rushed off. There's obviously an issue with the rider at the back there, which they, you know, that's what her job entails of being down here and they say just been a wreck, react that quick. I know it's midway through an interview, but I respect I've had to deal with that rather than talk to us. Yeah. yeah. It happens. Right, you've got literally five minutes to have a go at winning this uh, Hebo fuel tank. Yeah, the Hebo fuel tank supplied by Apico Factory Racing, uh, who are uh, wholesalers um, in the motorcycle trade. They supply all the competition dealers with uh, motocross and trial equipment both hard parts and uh, soft parts, so uh, the Hebo Auxiliary fuel tank. Uh, the question is, how many sections are ridden each day at the Scottish Six Days Trial? And the draw, uh, because obviously we've got more than one entrant, which is uh, a correct correct entry, entry anyway, uh, will be drawn during the uh, interview with former World Trials champion and former Scottish Six Days winner, Bernie Schreiber, who will be speaking to us live from the Bahamas this morning. In about morning. 10 minutes' time. In 10 minutes' time, yeah. Well, I think we should have any messages you've got back there. Maybe do a tune and get any messages we need to get played out of the way. Uh, yeah, so with regards to today's competition, if you do want to get involved, uh, you can call or WhatsApp the studio 01397 706 100. You can also email us at studio at nevisradio.co.uk or you can get direct on Facebook at Nevis Radio Official. If you are listening wondering what's going on, you can check it out on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash Nevis Radio Official. And obviously the previous couple of days are available for you to watch back at your own leisure now as well. It's quite um, nice to go back and catch up and see what was actually said, because a lot of the time we're doing this stuff down here, and if I'm honest, you don't listen to it all? No, no, indeed. Uh, go back and have a wee review. It's quite nice to go and listen um, to it. At some point, possibly tomorrow, because I've not really had the time in, in recent days, I'll try and get some uploaded links so people can listen again on our Mixcloud yeah, surface that's as well. Yeah, uh, So we'll get that sorted out. Um, but no, that, that's kind of what we're up to at the moment. Uh, what else have I got? I think that's about it. Uh, we've got some adverts and a chin. Yeah, that'd be good. And what we may do is do a very quick uh, update on the route before we chat to Bernie, if that's okay with John. Oh, yep. actually, I yep. do have something else. I've written it down and I've covered up my piece of paper. Where is it? Yeah. Uh, are you doing results? We have done them. Uh, okay. Um, Wendy Miller has uh, phoned up asking, uh, could he have a, a recap of some results? Specifically, local guy Gary McDonald. He's, he's looking for an update on him. Okay, we can do that. Yeah, we'll do that as well. Okay, cool. Right, I will play some adverts, play tune, and we'll be back. Excellent. A Pico Factory Racing. Hard pause that you woke up in the morning with initiative to move, so I make a harder.
for the players. You will never be stuck for things to do and places to see throughout the Haber. Experience the abundance of history, emerge yourself in a movie scene, walk within our great outdoors and see our wildlife running free. Rain or shine, there is always something to do. Get out and enjoy all the incredible things we have to offer right here in Lochaba. Day 3, Wednesday the 3rd of May here in Fort William, Scotland for the Scottish Six Days Trial. Yeah, it is indeed. I can't multitask. I think Mr W's right, I cannot multitask. Ah, there you go. Because we haven't done your lunchbox yet, we need to do that before. We've done the lunchbox and we have a, we're just about to just cover the, the result uh, at the moment and then we'll be having an interview with a well-known rider. So the first sections today... Group A, two sections at Calart, not accessible to the spectators really. Uh, and then uh, the first rider was there at 8 o'clock a few hours ago now. And uh, Group B, Lower Mamore, it doesn't have a grid reference, but it's right beside the road and Kin just before Kinloch leaving on the top road. Um, okay, uh, sorry, sorry I'm, I think I'm working. Can you hear us okay? Yeah. Yeah, now we got you loud and clear. Oh, sorry. yeah. I need I need to put the faders up for that to work. But yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll we pick that up as here. we go along. Um, okay. I'll, I'll try I'll try and adjust things. We're just doing the route at the moment. Cool. Right. So uh, the third group of the day, Schoolhouse Falls at Kinloch Leaven, two sections. First rider was there at nine o'clock. Uh, Greymare's Tail, three sections at Greymare's Tail. That's Group D, and of course the old favourite, the iconic Pipeline, which is just outside the village of Kinloch Leaven. It's about a mile and a half, two miles up the hill. Uh, towards the Blackwater area on a, a good road up there. You can't take a vehicle up, but you can certainly walk it. Uh, two sections there. First rider was there at 9.30. Then the next three groups of sections are pretty remote. Loch, Chiren, uh, the Larig and Bradleg, an old favourite there, Bradleg. I remember riding that in 1977, but it's probably a different section now. Witch's Burn, one single sub there, uh, the Witch's Cauldron. Um, you can access it two ways, either by going up through Banavey, passing the Moorings Hotel, or you can go out to the Spean Bridge Memorial and cut down that road, and uh, the first rider uh, is there at 12.30. Followed by a group, Group J, which is four sections at Glen Malley. Uh, first rider there at one o'clock, and then Eochen at uh, Group K, 
five sections there, uh, 1340. It's got a map reference there, so it should be accessible, but it's not a section I, I know anything really about. I don't think I've ever been there. So that's the route for Wednesday, Thursday, May hump day, as they say on social media. And there's always those favourite sections, chatting to David Dignan earlier, that yeah, the spectators want to go and they'll go to the same ones every year just because they, they know the layout, they know where they can maybe squat, sit, get good pictures and that sort of stuff. Yeah, exactly. And uh, it's a bit of familiar, fam familiarity, but of course now we've got new routes creeping in and uh, yesterday was a running in year for the new route for the Tuesday there. Uh, but as usual, Tuesday a bit tight for time. Yeah, which they've uh, sorted out a bit today, going a bit extra time in places, haven't they? Which so I believe it's sort of re relaxed it a little bit, so uh, hopefully that'll work for everybody. And the, the, the weather so far has been really good this morning and uh, really pleased to see it's dry, a little bit chilly, not too cold, and it's just, I would say, it's ideal for riding a motorcycle today. Absolutely. I want to say a very good morning to Bernie Schreiber on behalf of Zordia Nevis Radio. Good morning, Bernie. Hopefully, uh, this is working and we should have Bernie on the phone. Yep, hello, good morning. Hello, Bernie, I'm John Weller. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. How are you? Very good. Is it nice over there? It's early morning, I understand. Yes, yes. Good morning, yeah. Welcome <laughs> to you all. Uh, well, got... Yeah, yeah, it's, um, I'm, I'm great. Yeah, thank you. It's nice to join uh, Nevis Radio, uh, this time from the Bahamas. So, you know, don't hang up if, uh, if you're feeling <laughs> a bit cold, but... As I heard from John, it sounds like the weather's pretty good over there. Uh, to be fair, Bernie, don't, don't worry, we won't uh, hang up on you. you. Have you been following the... It's John Moffat here, the by the way, Bernie, sorry. Um, I should really introduce you properly. So we'll maybe just run through that. So can I just say that Bernie was born in Los Angeles, California. He began riding trials at age 10 years of age. Uh, he was influenced, uh, or he sh it actually influenced the new riding style by adding floating pivot turns. Um, in 79, he was working champion on Boltaco, winning four of the 12 events. In 1982, he became the first and only American to win the Scottish Six Days Trial, and also a four-time American Trials champion. He retired in 1987 with a record of 20 world wins and 48 podiums. In the year 2000, he was inducted to the American Motorcycling Hall of Fame. He co-wrote the popular book, Observe Trials, with Len Weed, and in 2021, he became FIM Trials Legend. In 2022, he became the FIM Trial Vintage Trophy Ambassador. Now, um, Bernie, you've been following the Scottish Six Days Trial this year online, I would take it. Uh, yes, uh, yes, indeed. It looks like another fantastic year in uh, in Fort William with, with, with some with some new riders and. Uh, Looks like the same leader for the moment, but uh, some new routes and everything. It's great to see, uh, you know, Nigel Burkett, you know, attempting his 50th uh, Scottish. It's just amazing. Um, since I thought for me three times was already quite tough. So, you know, I got to congratulate him on that. That's amazing to me. And also great to see Jaime Subira from Spain, who I rode with back then, and uh, riding with his son, you know, so... Some new faces and uh, good to good to watch. Listen. Now, uh, tell us about 2022. Um, uh, you rode a few trials, and I believe you bought a new trials bike. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. Well, actually, yeah. And 2022 was a was a, was a really enjoyable year. Um, you know, especially after COVID. In spring, you know, I I had an interesting and uh, historical visit. To the Sammy Miller Museum. That's kind of when the year started, and you know what a person and what a what a place. Uh, it was just an amazing uh, experience for me personally. And then in, in June, I celebrated uh, my 40th anniversary victory of the Scottish in Montana, actually, where I'd won uh, also the U.S. Nationals that uh, same year, 1982. So it's uh, you know the year really started out really good and. Uh, you know, we had a great event there. I had a school there, and we had a two-day trial as well with about 125 riders attended. You know, that's, that was including a few American champions. You've probably heard of uh, Scott Head and, and Jeff Aaron, so they both attended the event as well. And after that, you know, I, I, I came back to Switzerland. I bought a Boltaco 199A uh, from my Swiss friend and trials champion, Walter Fry. Um, and... It, 
you know, it's a, it's a very similar bike to the one I rode in 1980 at the Scottish Six Days. And, uh, you know, it hasn't, hasn't been prepared by Cumberford's, but uh, In Motion UK uh, was very helpful sending all the parts uh, needed to make it, you know, make it run perfectly. Um, so, yeah, and upon my return uh, from the U.S., I also wrote a trial, uh, an invitational trial called the RBC in France. It was organized by Joël Corois, who was a trial dealer back back in 1983, so 40 years ago. He founded JCM Trials Bikes, um, of which eventually Charles Coutard rode for and uh, was the first rider ever in the world to ride a motorcycle up the Eiffel Tower. And um, so it was a, it was a pretty uh, pretty amazing experience to see all the all the history of that. Uh, also visiting Joel, and uh, so I hope to go back this year and ride it again. Uh, have, we've seen you at the Trials de Nations last year as well. Tell us a little bit more about that, Bernie. Yeah, that um, yes, that was another amazing event actually with with friends and old riders. The FIM nominated me as uh, the ambassador. That was their very first ever trial vintage trophy in uh, Monza, Italy. Um, the vintage event was on Saturday prior to the Trial de Nations. And, you know, the venue, the Monza venue is very historic for car racing, but not, you know, for natural trial sections. It struggles, you know, for the artificial ones, they can build them, but the natural, natural ones are a bit difficult. But overall, the event was fabulous. They had over 10,000 spectators very close to Milan. And uh, so it was great, great riding by both vintage and TDN riders. Uh, Philip Burlis. Uh, Philip Berlitti, he won the Vintage Trophy, and Spain won the CDN. But uh, I hope that they'll do a, you know, a, a team Vintage Trophy event in the future. That's what I was looking for. Uh, so what else is going on in uh, Bernie Schreiber's Trials World this year, 2023? Well, uh, well, in 10 days I'll be I'll be doing a trial school in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, a two-day school with Mike McCabe, some of you may remember, who was the first uh, American to participate at the Scottish Six Days in 1972. Um, he's originally from Tulsa, and he, he was assisted, actually, with uh, Kurt McCabe, was assisted with Kurt Mayfield uh, during that uh, first attempt. But Kurt Mayfield organized uh, this weekend school that I'm doing. It's with the North of uh, Eastern Oklahoma Trials team. And that, that the Tulsa Club was established back in 1969 as one of America's oldest clubs. So Kurt and Mike will be celebrating their 50th anniversary of the first American team to actually participate in the Scottish Six Days in 1973. I think there were some other riders, but it was Kurt and Mike and I think uh, Roger Bickham, uh, from Kansas concluded a three-man team that year. And so I'm really looking forward to the celebration and uh, looking forward to the Tulsa School, which was fully booked uh, months ago. Yeah, well, so that's very interesting good, because good obviously you're putting back into trials um, as, a, as an experienced competitor and uh, ambassador for the sport. Um, any plans for uh, Scotland this year? Uh, yes, indeed. I'm, uh, you know, I'm delighted to ride the Highland Classic two-day trial in June. Uh, it's been four years since my first experience, but I really enjoyed it. It was, uh, it was, it was really enlightening. I, uh, you know, Aldi Estates, you know, it's it's very unique. It offers a variation of terrain. I think making the sections, you know, all different, you know, within one property, you know, from rivers to all kinds of different riding. So I really enjoyed it. And the atmosphere was uh, very friendly with some top riders as well, including Gary McDonald. So, um, personally, I've never seen uh, Gary Dab on a on a bike. Huh? So, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to see it this year either. I know he's had a few already in the Scottish, but I've never seen him do it. Um, so, but it, it looks like I'll be starting early um, with the guest of honor, Nigel Burkett, and also Steve Saunders and Mick Jeffries. You know, at this 
this year's Suzuki edition. So uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Always a lot of you know beautiful classic bikes at the event. Um, and I'm not sure what I'll be riding yet, but I, I heard it has a lot of unique classic parts. So maybe you've seen the bike, but uh, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Yeah, I'll have to admit I probably have seen the bike. It's in uh, it's in my garage at the moment, so it's being worked well, why, on. Well, why don't you. we talk about that at um, at the next on the next uh, gloves off and trials guru? So I'll let you. Uh, we'll go into more details on that. Sounds like a plan to me. Yeah. Now uh, it's <laughs> it's 41 years now since you won the Scottish Six Days Trial back in 1982 on the SWM. Does the event still resonate with you today, Barney? Well, yeah, it's been 41 years, um, but yeah, the, the event, yeah, probably it resonates. You know, it's it's just more now than ever before. Um, and the, the, the Scottish and a handful of classic events is really all that resonates with me in today's world of trials, unfortunately. Um, the traditional sections, you know, trial sections and rules are enjoyed, I think, by uh, the large majority of trials riders worldwide. And I believe that will continue for a long time to come. Um, it's, uh, I just think we really need to respect the tradition. Um, like the Scottish, and uh, respect the rules and the opponents and the organizers and officials and the history. Um, and I think those are the values that we really need to respect. And, uh, you know, sometimes the victory is in the quality and the fairness of the competition, not just, you know, the final score. So, you know, to resonate with events like the Scottish, and I think I'm, I'm not alone. There's a lot of people watching, and I see a lot of comments on Facebook and social media. So, it's uh, you know it's a fantastic event and I looks like it's already started to be a great year. So, and, um, and so for me, you know, without a doubt, it you know winning the Scottish Six Day in 1982 still remains the greatest achievement of my trials career. Well, it's nice of you to say that. Obviously, being a, a born Scot, I take a lot of pride in the Scottish Six Days Trial being a a classic type of event. Um, because of the, the, the way that the event uh, operates and uh, everybody wants to ride the Scottish, which is a good thing for the sport. So, um, yeah. thank you very much, Bernie. Obviously, you're on vacation just now in the Bahamas and for taking the time out to join us again on Nevis Radio. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's a pleasure as always. And, uh, you know, thank you all at the Nevis Radio. And I, I wish you a wonderful week in Fort William. I hope the weather continues like it is. And, and um, I'm uh, I'm waiting for the final final result. Uh, I see there's some good riders up there in the top ten. It looks like they're going to be fighting it out for the whole week. So it's it's um, exciting exciting to watch. Yeah, I want to pass you on to John Weller just before we finish up uh, of Nevis Radio. Who wants to have a quick chat with you? Good morning, okay. Bernie. It's always good to catch Thank up with you, you. and uh, the knowledge and the the passion you got for the sport. It's always nice to hear about that. Uh -huh. And we've got one very important uh, job for you before you, we say goodbye. We've been running a competition all morning. Uh -huh. And we'd like you to pick a number between 1 and 29. 21. 21. 21 will be the winner, Simon. Simon's back at the studio. Lucky yeah. 21, right. Uh, sorry, I'm just counting just now. That would be Abigail. Abigail Maxwell I've got here. Oh, good, from Dumfries. That's brilliant. So Abigail's won this uh, auxiliary fuel tank, is that what you call it? Auxiliary fuel tank from Hebo. Um, so that'll be winging its way to Abigail. Uh, she does ride trials, so does her father, and uh, her, her grandfather was uh, a member of a motorcycle club, the, the, sorry, the Galloway from 1957. So, Bernie, uh, just before you disappear, I know you like music. Uh, we've chatted about this. We've, we've actually got quite similar tastes in music, as it were. Is there a song you'd like uh, to hear? Uh, yeah, must be our generation, John. Must be. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, let's, let's try America, the horse with no name. Okay, Bernie, that, we'll play that for you if we can get that up <laughs> in the work? system. And... Uh, I'll be seeing right. you in about a month's time when I when I haste you back to Alvia State near Aviemore for the Highland Classic two-day trial. Uh, thanks very much, Bernie. Thank you, and I look forward to seeing you in a month. Huh? Really appreciate it. 
Okay, thank you, Vanny. Goodbye. Thank you. Have a great week. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Bernie Schreiber, a former World Trials champion, which he won in 1979 on the Boltaco brand, followed up by the 1982 win at the Scottish Six Days Trial on the Italian SWM. And this is a horse with no name by America. Or maybe it's not. Are you there, Si? So I, mean, I, was, just, I was just sorting out the, yeah, the phone push the, push the play button on America. Okay. Lodges by the river, barges on the canal, or even a luxury castle. They all share the common theme of being surrounded by stunning views and incredible scenery here in Le Haber. Rest assured, we are doing everything we can to keep you safe during your stay. We can't wait to welcome you. the players. You will never be stuck for things to do and places to see throughout Le Havre. Experience the abundance of history, emerge yourself in a movie scene, walk within our great outdoors and see our wildlife running free. Rain or shine, there is always something to do. Get out and enjoy all the incredible things we have to offer right here in Le Havre. Trial. We were just chatting about Bernie and how knowledgeable in that. They say it's that passion to continue with it and uh, you know educate other people as well. Hundred percent. I mean, he's still uh, doing you know his 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 trial schools. He's still 
telling people how to or to help them to ride trials and things like that is really incredible because you know it's a lot of years ago since he won the Scottish Six Days, 41 yeah. years, and still has the passion for the sport. Um, and you know he made mention of that. You know he feels that these events to him are more important, and uh, you know just the, just the way it is. So uh, it's great that people keep an interest in their in their sport going. Uh, got news flash. Yeah, <laughs> news flash. <laughs> breaking <laughs> news. <laughs> well, uh, as we speak, can we just carry on? It's uh, very important. It affects all the spectators today who are heading for Lower Mamore. Unfortunately, due to an issue, Lower Mamore sections, three sections, have been removed from the trial immediately. So if you're heading to Lower Mamore, pick somewhere else, please, because those groups, three sections of Group B have now been removed from the trial. So just so you know that. Okay, sorry Simon. No, it's alright, that's obviously quite an important one. Uh, just had a message here from Shane Lovett, uh, talking about the chat he had there with uh, Bernie, saying he did enter on a JCM in 91 but swapped it to an MRS Aprilla the week before the start. Um, loving the footage, uh, he wishes he could ride one more time though, but hello to you. Okay. That's great. Very good indeed. Well, we need to have a look at that old lunchbox, I guess. Cue the music. We're getting feedback from somewhere. What's that? Mm. And from me. There you go. Here's the lunchbox we are going. We have got... This is the reveal. Oh, this is it's box number one. A chocolate bar. A choco snack, Ooh. would you believe? Starting with pudding. I feel like I should be doing a bit of a bullseye. In one. In one. Here we go then. A choco snack. Oh, here comes the official camera work now. In two. In two. Do, 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 do. We've got some taste buds. I think it is sultanas and strawberries. Oh, that'd be nice. Well. That would be the old palate tingling. And... Wriggly worms. A wriggly worm. Jelly worms. Can't cover half each. <laughs> can do. We can start at one end and kiss in the middle. And it's not little, like I can't show, John. All oh, right. A chocolate frog. Oh, I thought it was after nine o'clock we'd get away with that. You, you say chocolate frog, but it's, it's a Freddo, John. It's, it's a Freddo. Okay. I know it's a brand name, but it's a Freddo. That's yeah, it's a brand it name. Is. Here we go. We're twisting the box now. We're getting to the bigger compartments. In three. three. Oh, it's not a surprise, oh, but it's a, a happy hippo biscuit. Can you go on biscuit, man, today? It's very, very dessert-based. Very nice. There's got to be something savoury. About to eat a mm. pork pie or something, I reckon. Nom, nom. Mm. And here we go. The main reveal for the bullseye for the mystery prize. In four. You've won a speedboat. Oh, what's happened? It's been cut ooh, out. Ooh. <laughs> First of all, a bag of crisps. What flavour? Cheese and onion, of course. Oh, nah. Why cheese and onion, of course? And you've got to get in close for this. Do, 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 do. Is it a clover? Was it a fleur de lis? It looks like a fleur de lis. I'll go for a fleur de lis. Fleur de lis. Yeah. Somebody has got artistic. Sandwich. Pastry cutters. <laughs> That's going to be a ham. nightmare to eat. That's a, You're oh, going to get a floppy end somewhere, I'll tell that. you. Don't worry about that. You're a floppy end on your sandwich. And a, and, a, and a drink. You'll never get crushed in the middle bit. A fruity drink. <laughs> Other brands are available. There you go. Of that is John's lunchbox for this Wednesday, the third of May. Job done. <sighs> Job done. Happy with there. that. Have you worked out what that bit of music's called? Do you know? Um, all I know it's the it's the introductory theme tune for the late Laurel and Hardy. Yes, but I'll try. But there where, is a name which for it. Which was that? Because it was back in 1935. I think oh, Hardy. Yes, yeah. And uh, the, the actual tune is called the Cuckoo Dance or Dance of the Cuckoo. Oh, right. Yeah, well, that makes sense. So there you go. Do, do, do. That's another fine mess you've got. Well, you're supposed to say, yeah. I suppose. That's I a, another old. fine mess you've got me into, Stanley. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm. <sighs> Sai's got no idea about this one. He can't do it. black and white. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with it. Right. <laughs> Did you know that Laurel and Hardy, when it was exported to Germany, wasn't called Laurel and Hardy? No. Anybody know what it was called? No. Klaus and Frank. I don't know. No. Dink and Doof. Dink and Doof. Dink and Doof. And, Dink and uh, Doof. They, I, I don't know why, when they were so famous in the whole world, that the Germans had to rebrand it for was, their television. Was it, was it still Dink funny or was it more factually based? I don't know. <laughs> I've no idea. But, uh, well, obviously, uh, Stan Laurel was from Cumbria. Yeah. 
and there was a little, I think it was a little Stan Laurel Museum, I remember, and it wasn't Keswick, it was, was it Whitehaven or somewhere like that? the one there. I'm the sure my yeah. friends from the northeast of uh, England, northwest of England, sorry, would um, tell me more about that, but there wasn't a, a museum there for Laurel and Hardy. Uh, sorry, well, for Stan yeah, Laurel, Stan actually. Laurel. Um, so, yeah, um, that was it. Yeah. Right, if we can do one quick tune, is that OK? Then we'll come back and do the results. Uh, Could we have pink and trustful? Oh, hang on. You kind of put me on the spot there. Sorry, I know. Uh, that one, this one try not to leave it too late. No, 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 you're all right. You're all right. Uh, as, long as, we, as long as we're talking up to news after that, we can, we can do yeah, that. Yeah, we'll do that. Trustful. That's and, the latest one, isn't it? Yeah, it's brilliant. The album's why, fantastic. Why can't I find it? People are looking I'll for an alternative to it. Cal... Sorry, to Lower Memoir, and really the, the, the main ones to go to is either Grey Mare's Tale, if you know how to get into that, or Pipeline, which is, you know, you can walk up the walk up the, the track, yeah. Pipeline. Um, it gives you a bit more time if you've planned. In Pipeline, you can... You'll manage to get some sort of parking and can look leaving, I would imagine, and uh, just head out up uh, the pipe, the the pipe, the dam. Sorry, the Blackwater yeah. Path Road. Yeah. Found it. Yeah, yeah, we're good. Okay, we'll play this. Uh, anyone <coughs> else to get out of the way? No, nope. uh, we'll play this. Back Come back to the results, the and uh, then we'll take us up to the news at eleven. Plan to plan. Mountainous landscapes to deserted sandy beaches, relaxing woodland trails to heart-racing adventure. From historic treasures to the simplest of pleasures. The view from the top, the cleanest air. Hidden places and wide open spaces. Unearth the breathtaking world right here in the harbour. You will never be stuck for things to do and places to see throughout Le Havre. Experience the abundance of history, immerse yourself in a movie scene, walk within our great outdoors and see our wildlife running free. Rain or shine, there is always something to do. Get out and enjoy all the incredible things we have to offer right here in Le Havre. Visit a Scottish region full of wonder 
From stunning mountainous landscapes to deserted sandy beaches. Relaxing woodland trails to heart racing adventure. From historic treasures to the simplest of pleasures. The view from the top, the cleanest day. Day three, we've got two minutes to go up till 11 o'clock. Um, it's been great being down here, great atmosphere. The park firm is emptying out of bikes right now, as you'd expect. We're up to ride, we're well, down to it, we're going down in number, you actually work it out. But we are down to ride about 26, 27 at the moment, getting ready to ride out. Um, John's chatting to uh, Gary McDonald, uh, local competitor, and we'll probably catch up with his story as we go through the week, sort of find out what's been happening there. Um, because as we were reporting on the scores, we're going to do that very, very shortly. Try and take it up to news. You've got about a minute, John, to uh, rattle through some of those scores. Yeah, we have the leader at the moment is uh, after day two is Dougie Lampkin, number 110 on the Vertigo and one mark lost. In second position is Jack Peace, rider 262 on two marks lost. In third position, uh, Billy Green on the Scorpa, rider number 36 is on two. And on three marks in fourth position is Franz Cadlick, rider number 114. Dan Peace, rider 261, is on four marks. On eight marks lost is rider uh, Mike, Mike Brown on 129, Michael Brown, sixth position. Uh, Jack Challoner in eighth position, also on eight marks, rider 178. And Chris Stay for the Mile of White on the TRRS is uh, a rider 125, ninth position, also on eight marks. Thomas uh, Minta in 10th position on a, a rider 128, also on 8 marks. Uh, just having a quick chat with Gary McDonald there, and uh, he has been uh, excluded from the trial, unfortunately. So we'll catch uh, we'll up with that tomorrow, we can tomorrow. Sort of find yeah. out what's been going on. It's been great, thanks to Dan, thanks to Sai, thanks to John Moffat. We'll be back same time, same place tomorrow. From 96 points.